will please rise and move colors to the singing of our national anthem by Arapaho Jr. Christian Holcomb. All right, everyone, welcome to Arapaho this evening for the girls' RPAC East finals tonight. We have three games coming up for you. First one is Arapaho and Bertrand getting ready to tip off right now. Just got done introducing the starters. We will be bringing you all three games on the same live stream tonight, so just keep it right here the whole evening. Warriors win the tip to start things off. Emma Strand bring the ball up. Uh, now to Larson, back to Strand. Carpenter within the corner. Nice look in there into Hilker. She loses it, saves it. To Emma Strand for the put up and in. First points on the board by Emma Strand. Warriors get in a little three-quarter court press here. That's Shane with it in the corner, gets double teamed, gets it off to Brown, and we're gonna have a jump ball here. Oh, 
Anderson to inbound, into Brown. Blocked by Warner, good block there. Larson will push the pace. Finds Warner, almost in the corner there. Three is no good. Fight for the ball here. Goes out of bounds off a of Lady Warrior. We go to the Vikings. Phillips inbounds it, gets it back. Gets caught in that gray area. Carpenter poked it loose, so it'll be off the Warriors. Like I said, we'll have three games this evening. Uh, girls action is tonight, boys is tomorrow. We'll also have three boys games tomorrow. As far as tonight goes, we will have Cambridge and Southwest after this at six and Elma and Southern Valley at 7.30. So keep it right here. All three games will be on the same stream. That was a three missed by Phillips, rebound Emma Strand. She'll bring it up down the right-hand side, dumps it off to Hilker, and she traveled with it. Shane with a nice look down there at the low post to Brown, able to finish. Score is tied up 2-2 now, 6.30 left in this first quarter. Carpenter gets it in the mid post area. Good turnaround squaring up and finishing, makes it 4-2. Phillips breaks the press there. Has it ripped away by Clara Hilker. Good job there, aggressive hands. Warner gets, pushes it ahead to Larson. She'll take a long three, but way short. Good rebound by Hilker to Carpenter. Good look there, good team basketball. Makes it 6-2. Anderson over to Phillips. Now back to Anderson. She's looking for some help, dead ball. Gets it to Evans. Evans with it. First meeting this season for Arapa and Bertrand. We'll be playing them shortly though, towards the end of the season here. So we'll play them again, not too long from now. We just had a travel over there in the corner. I think that was on Evans. Warner with it, right wing, she'll drive through. Splits the defense, bounce past the Carpenter, goes through her legs. Evans brings it down the right side, all the way, dumps it off, and she is fouled before that, so Vikings will take it out on the baseline here. That was a three hit by Shane off the inbound. Good look there. She was ready to shoot and able to capitalize. Makes it 6-5. Five. five minutes now left in the first. Strand brings it up to the top of the key. Over to Warner, right wing. Now Hilker on the baseline, great look into Carpenter. <clears throat> she is fouled though. Not able to finish for the N1, but she'll shoot two at the free throw line. Looks like that foul was on Shane. Both teams with one team foul apiece so far. And first one is good by Carpenter. Makes a 7-5. Second one is draws no iron, so it'll go back to Bertrand. Please apologize uh, in advance as I am fighting a little bit of a cold, but we'll power through it. We got a lot of action coming up. We got boys, RPAC East finals tomorrow, and then the Daryl Barnes wrestling invite all day on Saturday. Anderson with it on the right side. Finds that entry pass to Brown. Over to Phillips, back up top is Shane. Excuse me, that was Evans that took the three there, not Shane. Ball went out of bounds off Bertrand. Back to the Warriors as we have a sub in. Caitlin Evans checking in for Livia Phillips. And now the Warriors check in Chloe Gooden for Sage Larson. Strand hands it off to Warner. She looks to set things up. Now Strand looking. They swing it around to Gooden. 
tipped away. Brooklyn Evans with the tip there. She'll bring it up, guarded by Gooden. Gets it off to Caitlin Evans. You know, both Evans girls in right now are juniors, so I'm going to assume that they're twins, but I'm not 100% sure. Someone please correct me in the live chat. Evans misses a three, long, rebound by Strand. She crosses over, guarded by Anderson. Top of the key, now over to Gooden. Looking for Hilker. Brown saw it all the way, stole it away. Evans down the right-hand side. Anderson will set things up. Looking for Brown, Brown's calling for the ball. She does get it, she kicks it back out. Evans will take a long three, short. She's not hesitating to shoot the three so far. Either one of the Evans. That was a mid-range post shot missed off the offensive rebound. It does stay here with Bertrand as number 45 Libby Kugler checks in for Emma Brown. Both Bertrand and Arapaho with fairly small teams this year. Bertrand only with nine players, Arapaho with 10 on the whole team. Evans, Brooklyn Evans there with the three. She banks it in, gives Bertrand the lead eight to seven after that make. Arapaho girls sitting at eight and nine on the season in class D1. Bertrand girls sitting at five and nine in class D2 this season. Stolen away by Brooklyn Evans. She brings it up. Gooden is coming. Wolf is coming. She, and I think Gooden fouled her, or Warner. Phillips checks in. Phillips is in for Shane. Phillips, long two, no good. Off of Kugler's hands, I thought, but they say it's off of Lady Warrior. <clears throat> Lady Warriors packed the paint in here on this baseline's in inbound. They got to watch the corner, though, as they gave up a three earlier. And they're going for it again. She gets a good look. Just had made one, draws no iron there, and we're going to have a, ooh, a foul on the Warriors. Push in the back, it looks like, on that rebound. Larson checks back in here for Gooden. That was on Gooden, that foul. That is her second already, so she heads to the bench. Evans gets it in that same corner again, wide open. And we're going to have another foul on the Warriors. Warriors cannot get into foul trouble this early. <clears throat> Brooklyn Evans then bound it here. Kugler off to Caitlin Evans, drives. Good job by Hilker, going straight up. Able to get the rebound, almost lost it there. Strand ahead to Warner, she'll drive. All the way through to the rack, no good. Shot just a little short, she gets her own rebound and she is fouled. Gonna be a reach on the Vikings. Must have been a shooting foul. She heads the line, only the second team foul on Bertrand, four on the Lady Warriors. First free throw good by Warner as we have Ewalt and Farner check in for Hilker and Strand. Fight for the ball, that second one was missed. We're gonna have a jump ball called that stays with the Warriors. Warner to take the ball out on the baseline. Warner has her inbounds pass stolen away. Brooklyn Evans all the way. Shot is short, but Larson draws a foul now. Has five team fouls already this first quarter for the Lady Warriors. Still two full minutes left in this first quarter. Evans heads the line for two here. That is Larson's first.
We're going to have a timeout. I think Coach Blackmore called a 30-second timeout. Looking at the schedule, like I said, RPAC East Girls Finals tonight, RPAC East Boys Finals tomorrow night. After this game tonight, we will have Cambridge and Southwest at 6, and then followed by Southern Valley and Elma at 7.30. Winner of that last game advances to the championship game in McCook on Saturday. And the winner of the next game versus Cambridge and Southwest will play in the third and fourth place game, also at McCook on Saturday. All those finals and consolations on Saturday will be held at the Graf Events Center there at McCook Community College. A great location if you have not been to that venue, a great place to catch a bunch of games, good central location here for the RPAC as well. Free throw miss there, Brown gets the offensive rebound though, outlets it to Evans, and... Anderson takes the three, no good. Warner pushes it ahead to Larson. Larson will drive now, good look in there to Ewald. She was left alone, shot just short. Defensive rebound by Brown, out to Anderson. She looks ahead. Crosses over the left side. Caitlin Evans over to Anderson. Brooklyn Evans now waiting for someone to get open. They swing it all the way around. Now back to Evans. The other Evans drove, kicked it back out. Swinging it around and Brooklyn Evans takes another three. Long rebound out of the reach of Carpenter and added Anderson takes a three. Another offensive rebound by Brown. Third look here, another three, long two actually. Yet another one, Brown gets another one. On the fifth attempt, they finally put it back in. They had five shots at the basket on that possession alone. That puts the Vikings back up, eight to 10, under a minute left in this first quarter. Farner, right wing, into Carpenter. She squares up, oh, traveled. Yep, good call. And Farner, of course, hits the three. Hilker is in for Ewalt. Shane is in for Brooklyn Evans. Warner's fouled, it looks like. Oh, Warner fouled, sorry. He's trying to do two things at once. There's a second foul on Warner already this first quarter, not great. Caitlin Evans sinks the first. Kugler back in for Brown. Second one, no good. Good box out there by Hilker. Ewell gets a nice look, goes up strong, gets fouled. She'll shoot two now. <clears throat> First one by Ewald is in. That makes it nine to 11 as Strand will check in for Warner who has those two fouls already. Second one, no good. Ball goes out, off of the Warriors. Back to Bertrand. <laughs> oh, inbounds, good job by Farner there, poking it loose. Bounced off of Anderson and out, so back to the Warriors now. They have a chance to set up an inbound on the baseline. Strand lobs it into Farner. Finds Hilker at the high post, just rolls out of her hands, and now going the other way with it. Oh, that was Shane with it, but stolen away by Strand. Good job by her running in transition there. Farner to Strand. Eight seconds left now. Strand takes a little floater. Mid-range floater, no good. 
Out of bounds stays with the Warriors though, 4.2 seconds. They have a chance for one final shot still. Chance to tie it up or take the lead. Farner's open for three. She'll set up, takes it. No good. Ewalt goes up and clock will expire there. So we'll end our first quarter with the score nine to 11. We'll be bringing you all three games tonight. Girls tonight, boys tomorrow. Both nights, all three games will be on the same live stream, so you will not need to switch. Just get it on, stay here. We'll try to announce all three games as well, too. Uh, I'll do the first one. We might also have some student announcers joining us later for the second two. We also do mute it during warm-ups, so don't be Worried if you see it muted during warm-ups just to avoid any copyright stuff with some of the warm-up music. We'll mute it during warm-ups, give ourselves a little break, and we'll be back with the action. Saved there by Carpenter, and saved it into Bertrand though. And now they'll sling the ball around. They swing it again, back to Anderson. She'll take a three in rhythm, no good. Carpenter gets the rebound. Good job squaring up, outlets to Strand. Hilker passage was intended for Carpenter, stolen away by Anderson. Good ball movement by the Vikings the last couple possessions. Evans settles for another three though. Farner gets the rebound. Really think Bertrand could have some success inside the paint. Instead, they're settling for a lot of threes so far. But yet, Bertrand is still up. 11 to 9. Strand will take a three now. Off the backboard, no good. Rolled in and out. Phillips fights with Larson. We're going to have a tie up. It'll go back to the Warriors. Good job by Larson fighting for the ball there. Oh yes, someone did correct me in the live chat that the loser of the 7.30 game will be playing for third and fourth, not the Cambridge Southwest game. It's been a long day, not very good at math right now. So yes, that is a good correction there. The loser of Elma and Southern Valley will play in the consolation, the third, fourth game. The winner advances to the finals. Next time out, I'll be looking at the bracket and we'll tell you who's playing on the west side tonight and the girls as well. I think those are in Hitchcock County to tonight and tomorrow. And we'll give you a little preview of the boys side as well as we go along tonight. While I was talking, uh, I think it was Anderson had to travel there. Warriors move the ball around. Strand left wing, pump fakes and drives. Throws up a floater, no good. 
Good rebound there by Emma Brown. Anderson ahead to Phillips now. On the left wing. Now over to Evans, she thought about the three. Decided to pull it up. Moving it around the key, but really no post-entry passes. There we have one, but it's stolen away by Hilker, and Farner traveled with it. Caitlin Evans checks in for Phillips. She'll inbound the ball here on the side. This will be the last RPAC game for these two teams, as well as the second game. Love this time of year with RPAC. Great being able to see all these teams in one place. Fight for the ball. Hilker knocked it loose along with Farner. Jump ball force, but stays with Bertrand. Missed there by Bertrand. Warner brings it up. Farner was calling for it on the, on the backside. Strand at the free throw line. They move it around. Hilker back out. Strand into Carpenter, mid post. No good. Another jump ball. We're gonna have a, a jump ball, yep. This time it'll go the Warriors. Crazy to think that we're already over, I think, 15 years of the existence of the RPAC. Makes me feel kind of old, because I remember when we started the RPAC, I was probably in about junior high. RPAC came about uh, as a combination of the RVL and the GPAC, of which several schools were members of both, including Arapaho. Ooh. Several shots there for the Warriors. They saved it in once. It got knocked out of bounds, but does stay with the Warriors again. Also next season, the RPAC is set to add two more teams, including Highline as well as Sutherland to the conference. So looking forward to that. Be two great additions. Hilker swung it around, but didn't quite square up to Warner and passes it out of bounds. I do have several of the first RPAC Boys Championships on my YouTube channel. Um, Reed Stagemeyer is my name. That is also the name of the channel. I have over 500 area high school sports games over the last several decades all the way back from the 60s, 70s, 80s, all the way through today. We've got a lot of Rappo, Cambridge, Holbrook, Rep Valley, Southern Valley, Elma, all kinds of area teams on there. So if you're a fan of the sport or some of those retro games or want to find a family member or friend, go check it out. Kugler now, out to Caitlin Evans. Good driving kick to Anderson. Her three is long, though. Rebound by Farner. They have a chance to push. Good look there to Warner, but even better job by Phillips running through, knocking it out of the way. Still 9-11. to I don't think anyone has scored this quarter yet. Still 3 minutes 50 seconds left till halftime. Also, if you're in the gym or in the area or coming tomorrow, the RPAC art display is out in the, by the commons area, out in the south hallway. So if you're on the way or coming, please check out all the great artwork from students all over the RPAC. <laughs> Rapa will also be hosting the Daryl Barnes wrestling invite on Saturday with 15 teams attending. Warriors swing it around, now Warner with it. Drives on that left side all the way through, good take. Uses the backboard, great finish. Ties this game up, 11 apiece. Warriors back in some pressure. Phillips gets it to Anderson who gets it back over to Evans. 
Back to Anderson, pump fake dribbles. Now into Kugler, the free throw line, stolen away by Warner. Wolf coming. She fights through it, good take, strong take. Not able to finish though, but draws the foul. First team foul on Bertrand this quarter. Warriors also with one. That is the first foul on Phillips. With the game tied up, Warner has a chance to give the Warriors the lead again. Under three minutes left till halftime. Also excited to see the other games tonight. Uh, Cambridge and Southwest will be a great rivalry game as well as Elma and Southern Valley. Two great rivalries for the East Finals. First one by Warner is good. First one by Warner was good to give the Warriors the lead. <clears throat> Second one also good, 13-11 is your score after the two made free throws by Warner. Warriors set up that pressure again. Evans over to Phillips. Needs to get it across, she does. Now to Shane, she'll drive baseline. Shot is short, draws no iron. Another jump ball, this one stays with Bertrand. Looking ahead to tomorrow night for the boys action, we will also be hosting RPAC East boys tomorrow night here in Arapahoe. The 4.30 game tomorrow will be Bertrand and Med Valley boys, followed by Southern Valley and Arapahoe. And then the final game will be Elma and Cambridge at 7.30 tomorrow. That is tomorrow for boys. Meanwhile, I think it was Shane just hit a three to give Bertrand the lead again. Warner resets, thought about the three. Passing it around, now she'll shoot it. Air ball. Tipped out by Brown though, so it stays here with 2.10 left on the clock. 13 to 14, Warriors down by one. A lot of fouls in that first quarter, not many at all in the second, so that's good news for both teams. Great find there, Carpenter able to put it up and in. Using that backboard, threw some traffic there. Warriors back on top, 15-14. Strand had the trap. And it works because Evans stepped on this out of bounds line there on the side. So with under two, Warriors chance to increase the lead. Oh, Ewalt was wanting it down low. It would have been a good look. Knocked out of bounds, stays with Arapahoe. Ewalt, high post, squares up, finds Farner backside for three. It looks good, it's in. Great job by Farner, being ready to shoot. Even better job by Ewalt, hitting her on that backside pass. That is what you have to do. I was not a scorer shooter, but I knew how to square up and hit that backside every time, and we always had shooters on the backside. Great job there. Warriors packing the pace on paint, excuse me, on this inbound. I said I am kind of fighting a little cold, so excuse me for my voice. Shot was missed, rebound by Brown though, and she is fouled. That'll be a shooting foul, she'll shoot two. I think the foul was on Ewalt, we will see. It was, that was her first. That is the third team foul now for Arapahoe. This quarter anyways, the fouls will reset after this quarter. Every quarter they reset now. And with the new rule change, the bonus is now at five free throws, and it is double bonus the rest of the way, at least till the end of the quarter before things reset. First one by Brown was no good. Second one also no good. 
Rebound by Farner. Outlets it to Warner. She wasn't looking, but she gra grabs it. Farner was looking for Ewalt. Now we have a fight for the ball. Scramble all over the, oh, save to Evans. She's able to bring it up here. Finds Anderson. Back to Evans, she'll take a three. Air ball. Anderson, step back three. Lot of threes for Bertrand. I'd really like to see him go inside. We've got some decent athletes, some decent size. We are not a big team. And the three's just not been falling so far. Need a little more inside out. Warriors up 18 to 14. 30 seconds left in the first half. Bertrand still in that zone. Warriors swing it around. They reverse it once. Now they'll get in it. Stolen away by Anderson. Pass was intended for Warner. Now Bertrand will try to get the last shot. She crosses the timeline with 10 seconds left. Ahead to Evans. Now in the corner is Shane. Over to Anderson. She has no one on the backside, so she'll dribble there and shoot. Shot was no good, but we had an offensive rebound by number 21. That was Ashlyn Edgren I missed coming into the game. Oh, Edgren is in. She did not draw the foul. Brown drew the foul and will be shooting. They're discussing things. They say the foul was before the end of the half. We'll see who that foul was on. Hopefully not on Warner. It is on Larson, her second. They're still discussing whether they're going to allow this foul, I think. We're trying to adjust something on the clock. I think they're trying to reset the backboards, maybe. As the lights are still lit up, looks like they got it set. Now we got 0.3 seconds left after that foul call. 0.3 seconds left on the clock as Brown heads the line for two. She sinks the first one. Brown misses the second. Carpenter with the rebound. That'll be half. Going into halftime, Arapa with the three-point advantage in this first game of the evening. 18-15, your score. Finally starting to warm up out there. Feels really nice. So weather is great. Roads are fine. Please come on down if you're in the area. Got a lot of great games today and tomorrow. And again, wrestling all day here on Saturday as well. If you can't, though, if you're not in the area, please tune in as we'll be bringing you all of that action the next three days. Let's, let's look ahead to the west side of the girls' division here. So those games also going on tonight. If we can get some score updates, we will provide them throughout the evening. The RPAC West finals going on tonight are in Hitchcock County. Game going on right now is Maxwell and Wallace, followed by Dundee County Stratton in Hitchcock County at 6. And then the last game of the evening there in Hitchcock County is Maywood Hayes Center in Paxton. Again, for the boys' action tomorrow night, we'll have Bertrand and Med Valley here at 4.30 p.m., Southern Valley and Arapahoe at 6 p.m., Elma and Cambridge at 7.30 p.m. That last game, Elma and Cambridge, the winner will advance to the RPAC Finals. Loser advances to the consolation round on Saturday in McCook. All those games being held at the Graf Events Center. On the west side tomorrow, those games will be also in Hitchcock County. We'll have Wallace and Maxwell at 4.30, Hitchcock County and Paxton at 6, and the nightcap Maywood Hayes Center and Dundee County Stratton at 7.30. That should be a great rematch of the Cattle Trail Championship.
All right, I'm going to take a break, catch my breath. I'll mute it first. I'll leave it on, actually. So we'll be back for the second half.
All right, we are back getting ready to start the second half of action in this first game this evening, Arapaho and Bertrand. As the Warriors are leading 18 to 15, heading into the second half. Bertrand will get the ball first. Looks like we have same starters out on the floor. <laughs> Strand got caught on the sideline. Or Strand stole it, on, lost it on the sideline, so he'll stay here. Anderson falls down, but they get it into Brown. Anderson will reset. Anderson pump fakes over to Phillips, looking for Brown at the high post. Bounce pass was stolen away by Warner. She'll bring it up ahead to Larson now. Over to Warner. Now reversal to Strand. She drives, floaters up, uh, bounces around, gets the shooter's roll. <clears throat> Good take to start this second half. As Strand does have that floater down pretty well. She's been getting better and better at it all season. Arapaho, a very young team. Warner, the only senior on the whole team. Bertrand, also a young team, only one senior on their team, Kugler. Several chances there for Bertrand. Not able to capitalize. Warner brings it back up. Warner on the right side, guarded by Anderson. Now Hilker in the corner. Back to Warner. Dump pass to Carpenter. Mid-block again has been working, and she's been hitting him. It's a lost art, that mid-range game. You love to see it. Evans misses the shot. Warner saved it, tried to, and she was out of bounds. Twenty-two, fifteen. Your score is six forty left in the third quarter. Brooklyn Evans to inbound it. She's looking almost five seconds. She does get it in? A little fadeaway shot by Shane. Brooklyn tried to save it there. Went out of bounds. It's like Carpenter took a little shot. She's all right though. Might have taken one in the nose. Cambridge and Southwest just headed to the locker room at halftime. They're starting to get ready. Some of the players back out here to watch some of the second half. Warriors missed the shot, but able to get a rebound. And knocked out of bounds by Anderson. Stays with the Warriors here. Warner to inbound it on the side. Strand with it on the right wing. Good defense there by Anderson. Poked it loose again. Strand finds Hilker on the baseline. Kicks it back out. Warner drives. Floater no good. Anderson pushes the pace. Left hand side. Drives in. Loses the ball. Stolen away by Larson. Ahead to Warner. Power dribble. Was looking for Hilker, but fell down. Ooh, they say it went off a Lady Warrior. Thought Anderson touched it last. That is not the case. Arapo back in that pressure, though. And Larson forces a jump ball. That'll give it back to the Warriors here. Larson left wing. She hesitated, walked a little bit, got a little happy feet. That's going to be a turnover. Caitlin Evans checks in for Phillips. Bertrand coached by Trey Stutheit and assisted by Sam Bradney. The Warriors head coach is Preston Blackmore, assisted by Amy Watson. Bertrand lost the ball out of bounds there. We'll head the other way. Right. 
Warriors dribbling it around outside. Now the entry pass to Carpenter. She falls down. Saves it, though, out to Warner. Now stolen away by Evans. Evans tried to go up, but just kind of lost it out of bounds there. Like I said, Bertrand, a young team with only Kugler is the only senior. They do have a pretty big junior class. It's four, four of their nine players are juniors. We just had a foul. Evans fouled Larson there, right around the high post. Strand drives, poked loose by Evans. Anderson grabs it. She'll drive, now she's fouled by Larson. I think that is Larson's third. That was Evans' second on the other end. Both teams with one team foul apiece after that foul. That it will be a shooting foul. Anderson shoots two. Third foul on Larson. First one by Evans is good. Farner back in for Larson with those three fouls. Second one also good by Anderson. Two makes, makes it 22-17. 4.30 left in the third. Carpenter at the high post, squares up, shoots, rolls out. Gets her own rebound, great job following there. <clears throat> Carpenter really leading this team tonight. We're gonna have a timeout there on that dead ball. Coach Stute Height taking a timeout. I think that's a full timeout. It is. See if we can get you some score updates from Hitchcock County on the west side. <clears throat> also, I haven't seen if the RPAC Rundown is in the house. They might be in Hitchcock County tonight, actually, or might be coming later. But uh, they do a great job. I love all their coverage of the RPAC conference and just an awesome thing that they've been able to provide. So if you're not following the RPAC Rundown on social media or any of their interviews or full-length episodes, interviews, go check it out. Some awesome stuff. Also, a lot of video footage, photos, and score updates. So thank you to them for providing uh, great coverage of all our area athletes here in Southwest Nebraska. I'm checking their Twitter page right now to see if we have any updates. Maxwell and Wallace is going on right now. This is the first game in Hitchcock County right now. If I find a score, I'll give it to you. Anderson into Kugler. She goes up, no good. Offensive rebound though by Shane, stolen away by Strand and Hilker. Hilker will outlet to Strand. Now Farner, left wing. They reverse it around to Warner. Looking for Carpenter. Instead, she was trying to skip it to Strand, but Strand cut, zigged when she should have zagged. Just a little miscommunication there. 3.34 left in the third. 24-17. Ball was poked loose, but it stays with Bertrand. Anderson with a nice drive and finish through the middle of the lane off the backboard. 24-19 after that make. Strand surveys the field. Warner top of the key. Strand will take a three from that right wing. Hits rim, no good. 
Rebound by Caitlin Evans. Anderson traveled with it there on the far side. Gives the ball back to the Warriors as Brown and Phillips check in for Caitlin Evans and Shane. Looks like in the other girls game going on in Hitchcock County, Wallace is leading Maxwell 34 to 26 right now. Also in the third quarter, they're about at the same time we are. Bertrand lost the ball, Warner took it coast to coast there. Finishes on that right hand side, makes it 26-19. Warriors back in that pressure. Stolen away by Farner and throws it right back. Oh, did, was there a touch? They didn't see it. If there was, didn't see it. I think that was a good call. I don't know if I saw a touch. Anderson out to Phillips. Now Brooklyn Evans for three. Good. Nothing but net that time. Much needed points there for the Vikings. 26-22 is your score. It is still 34-26 nearing the end of the third in Hitchcock County as Wallace is still leading Maxwell. Great look by Warner into Carpenter. Right at that backside block. She is fouled though. Not able to hit the shot, but will shoot two. First one by, by uh, Carpenter, excuse me, is good. That's the second foul on Phillips. Second one by Carpenter, also good. Speaking of good, Gooden checks in for Farner. Evans gets it across the timeline to Caitlin Evans. Brooklyn to Caitlin, now jump ball. Great job and hustle by Warner, but it will stay with Bertrand. Right at one minute, 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Bertrand ball, Brooklyn Evans surveys the field. Now she'll drive a right hand side, floater short, draws rim, rebound by Warner, she'll push the pace. Good and on the backside. Warner steps through, throws it up, no good. No foul called. Ripped away by Gooden, though. Another possession here for the Warriors. See if they can capitalize. Larson falls down. And Coach Blackmore will help her out with the timeout. 30-second timeout by Arapaho. They still have possession here. 107 left in the third now. <clears throat> Jim starting to fill in. We expect a good crowd tonight for all three games. As the evening moves on, I expect it to keep filling in. Warriors up 28-22. Gooden tried the skip pass, knocked away by Evans, and Caitlin Evans will grab it. Brooklyn knocked it away, Caitlin grabbed it. Kugler now over to Phillips, swings it over to Brooklyn Evans. She drives baseline all the way, hits the bottom of the backboard, but we're gonna have a foul called on that shot. She will head to the line for two more. The foul was on Hilker. Uh, 
as Hill, oh, Warner actually, her third. First one by Brooklyn Evans, no good, as Anderson checks back in for Phillips. Second one is good, as we have Shane checking in, as well as Edgren for Brown, for Brown and Phillips, I believe. Warriors moving the ball around, looking for that entry pass. They skip it, Gooden skips it over to Warner. 15 seconds left now. Larson for three, she hits one. Great to see her make one as she's been struggling lately from deep. But earlier in the season at the Cattle Trail, one of the games she hit six threes, tying the school record. Kugler got trapped in the gray area there and the clock will run out. 31-23 after that made three right before the end of the third by Larson. Warriors take that eight point lead into the fourth and final quarter of this first game this evening. Coming up next, we'll have Cambridge and Southwest followed by Elma and Southern Valley all in the same live stream. So please keep it here. Also, I dropped a comment in the live chat, but I'll repeat myself again that we will mute the audio during warmups and usually halftime. We just do that to avoid any copyright stuff with the music. So it is what it is. We'd rather do that than have our live stream get taken down. So we'll mute it during warmups and halftime, give ourselves a break. But we'll be back bringing you all three games of action tonight on the same live stream. So stay tuned. Also, be having some of our student announcers, I think, will be up here for the last couple games. They do a great job and it's a great experience for them to do some impromptu public speaking. It'll be a Rapaho ball to start the fourth quarter. Warner on the side and finds Carpenter at the high post. Shot is short. Defensive rebound by Emma Brown. <coughs> Anderson hands it off to Phillips. Now over to Brooklyn Evans. They swing it back around to Anderson. She spots up for three. Good. Nothing but net, makes it 31-26. We still got a good game on our hands. Warner with it and she is fouled by Evans. I think that is her fourth. Looking ahead after RPAC, this will be both teams last game in the RPAC tournament. As Arapo will play Elma, that'll be a tough one coming up on January 30th, that is here. And then they'll play Brady at home at Hitchcock County, Cambridge at home, and Bertrand at home. I think that was Carpenter again at the high post. 33-26, Warriors in that pressure. And we have a 10 second call. The pressure forces Bertrand into a 10 second call. Looking ahead to Bertrand's schedule after the RPAC today, they will be at Cambridge on the 30th, then at Medicine Valley, at home versus Blue Hill, then at Arapaho, then Kennesaw at home to finish out the season, regular season, before sub-districts. Bertrand in D2, Arapaho in Class D1. Good look again into Carpenter. Bounce pass into that mid post. She's done a great job finishing those tonight. They get it across this time. They swing it around. Anderson with it over to Phillips. 
Foul by Warner. That is her third or fourth. It is her fourth. Anderson, Phillips, back to Anderson. Now into Brown. Good post move. Not able to finish. I'd like to see him do that some more. Brown with a nice move there. Knocked out of bounds by Brooklyn Evans. Stays here. Under six minutes left now in this game. Warriors take it out on the side. Strand to Ewald at the high post. Back out to Strand. Farner with it on the right side. Now in the corner. And she's trapped. Ooh. Foul on Brown. They called her with the body. Second team foul this quarter on the Vikings. Only one on the Warriors. First on Brown. Inbound into Carpenter. Shot hits rim is short. Offensive rebound by Desi Farner. No good. Another offensive rebound by Ewalt. And this time she's fouled. It should be a shooting foul. Which will put her at the line for two. That is the fourth foul on Brooklyn Evans. So several players on each side with four fouls now. First one missed by Ewalt. Caitlin Evans checks in for Brooklyn Evans. Second one is good, but we had a line violation. Anderson gets the ball. Pressure applied by the Warriors. They tried to get it across, but it was knocked out of bounds by Ewalt. Stays with the Vikings as Kugler checks in for Brown. Anderson with it, guarded by Larson. Farner ready to jump that pass. They get it to Caitlin Evans, now Phillips. Farner's gonna foul Anderson. Jumped into her body a little bit. First on Farner. Second team foul on the Warriors this quarter. 5.25 left in the game, nine point game. Shane gets a good look off the reversal and hits it. Long two is in. Cuts the Warrior lead to seven. Ewalt was on the baseline, tried to bounce pass it to Carpenter and threw some traffic, stolen away. Anderson was about to get trapped, but Coach Stutheit takes a timeout. Also going on today in Arapaho, the varsity bowling team has their last home duel of the season, of the regular season as well. They will have districts next week. I'll have to see where districts are at. But they're dueling Ogallala right now at Tornado Alley. It started at 5 p.m. They had Parents' Night versus Southern Valley last week. Or it might have been against Superior. Southern Valley was there as well. Phillips misses, Shane misses off the putback, fight for the ball, jump ball will stay with the Vikings. 
the Warrior Bowling team trying to continue the, some of the success that they had last year as they were the Class B district champions in our district. And Lauren Moore finishing in, in the top five. I think she finished fifth at state last year as a freshman. Ewalt fouled Kugler. She'll go to the line for two. Both teams with three fouls apiece. Second foul on Ewalt. Shot no good. Hilker back in for Ewalt. Does look like that the RPAC rundown is now in the house, so going to be providing some great recaps, some photos and videos of tonight's action. Second one, all, no good. Rebound by Carpenter, outlets it to Warner. Warner will drive. She'll throw up a floater, good. Good job using the backboard there. Got the shooter's roll. 37-28, nine point lead again after the make. Stolen away by Strand momentarily and saved by Shane and put in. Good job by Shane there. Strand guarded by Phillips. They reverse it around to Warner. Larson to Strand. Good inside out from Carpenter to Larson. Three bounces. Oh, it bounced in, but it hit the hit the cable holding the hoop up. So that's gonna be an out of bounds. I've never actually seen it hit that and go in, so that was pretty cool. Need an instant replay on that. Larson just took a seat. I think Gooden just came in for her. Warriors in that pressure still. Seven point game. Only a couple possessions. Vikings get it across. Brooklyn Evans now to Anderson. Across to Brooklyn. Stolen away by Warner. Warner takes it down. Finishes through some contact. Nine point lead again, 39-30. 3.13 left in this game. And Gooden's gonna foul. It's gonna be a foul on Gooden, the fourth on the Warriors, so they cannot foul again as that'll put Bertrand at the free throw line. There's the third on Gooden as well. Evans squares up, hands it off to Anderson, crosses over. Screen pick and roll from Brown and Anderson. Anderson shoots the three, no good. Good rebound there by Brown. Kicks it out to Evans, she'll drive. Finds Brown again. Good ball movement out to Anderson, no good. That was a three. Rebound by Cadence Carpenter. Strand over to Warner. She loses it out of bounds, but there's a foul called on Bertrand first with the body. Also the fourth team foul on Bertrand. One more will put the Warriors at the free throw line. Both teams got to be careful now. Larson back in for Gooden. Warner into Larson. Back out to Warner who resets. Warriors not in a hurry right now. Do not need to be in a hurry. Milk the clock. Went off Warner's leg and then she saved it and then it was taken away by Bertrand. We're gonna have a foul on Carpenter which will put Bertrand at the free throw line to cut into this Warrior lead. Looks like Elma just is just rolled in. Cambridge and Southwest gearing up for our next game. Elman Southern Valley will be our nightcap tonight. 7.30 is that last game. Making pretty good time. It is 5.48 right now. We're a little behind. So expect the next game to start around 6.10, 6.20. Both shots were made. Both free throws made. Makes it 39-32. Strand goes coast to coast. No good. Off of a warrior. I think it might have been off Carpenter last. Mm. 
Inbound into Brooklyn Evans. Ahead to Brown. Good, great look to Phillips. No good, but she is fouled. Which is honestly best case scenario right now. Slow that clock down, stop the clock, score on, a, on stop clock. Cut back into this lead, keep chipping away. That foul was on Strand, her second. <clears throat> Phillips' first one is in. Hit the back of the iron. <coughs> Second one, no good. Lo Hilker loses it, though, and Phillips had a shot, and she gets her own rebound, and now she's fouled, and it bounces in. That's going to count. I believe that's going to count. It does. That is worst-case scenario for the Warriors. As in about 10 seconds, their lead has been cut from 9 to 4. And with a chance for an and one here after this timeout by Coach Blackmore, full timeout. As things are going to ramp up, expect to Bertrand again some pressure here now. See if we can get a final score. That other game might be over already. The Wallace was leading Maxwell by about eight points at the end of the third. Looks like that game is still going on. It is in the fourth quarter and it's currently 38-31. Wallace is on top of Maxwell. Chance for and one here for Phillips. No good. Defensive rebound by Berkeley Warner. Warner's going to be fouled by Anderson, which will put them in the bonus. Puts Warner at the line for two. Both teams now in the bonus. That is Anderson's second. Brooklyn Evans set to check back in with those four fouls. Farner also set to check in. First one is made by Warner. Farner in for Larson, Evans, Brooklyn Evans in for Caitlin Evans. Second one rolls out. Rebound by Brooklyn. She'll take it all the way to the baseline, kicks it out to Anderson. Now into Brown. Back out to Evans for three in the corner. Not a bad look. And uh, offensive rebound by Brown. Now a tipped ball and saved by Shane. A third chance here. Only down by five. Evan still spot up again. Just a little off. Now we're going to have a jump ball. Oh, we had a travel call. I thought it was a jump ball. Would have gone to the Warriors, but instead a travel call. Keeps it down here with the Vikings. Brown over to Shane, she'll shoot a three. No good. Rebound by Farner. They were wanting to trap her in the corner, but she escapes. One minute, 10 seconds left in the game. 40 to 35, Warriors hanging on to a five point lead. Strand got in trouble, picked up her dribble in the gray area. Coach Blackmore calls another timeout. Full timeout with 106 left in the game.
I'm watching the end of the other game going on right now in Hitchcock County, and uh, looks like Wallace is still at 39-34 now, with 19 seconds left in the game. Inbound into Farner. Hands it off to Warner now. Guarded by Anderson. She fouls. It's going to be her third by Anderson. Warner at the line for two more free throws. Warner hits both. Excuse me, I think she only hit one. Score is 41-35. Full timeout by Bertrand. 53 seconds left in the game. Cambridge and Southwest set to face off in the next game, followed by Elma and Southern Valley tonight. So keep it here, all three games on the same stream. <clears throat> also, we are hoping to feature some of our student announcers after they get done playing. We'll have them up here, hopefully, for the last couple games, at least a little bit. They got some other obligations as well, but they're planning on coming up. Almost a five second call. Oh, great job by Shane grabbing it off Larson's back on the inbounds. And it's put up and in. I think that was Brown that made the shot. I may be wrong. But that nonetheless makes it a four point lead for the Warriors. And Bertrand just fouled. Fouled right away as there's only 44 seconds left. The foul was on Brooklyn Evans. She is fouled out. She is done. Caitlin Evans back in for her. <clears throat> Larson's first one gets the shooter's roll. Chance for one more here. Second one is also good. Two big free throws there. Makes keeps it a two possession game. Larson is out. Pass by Anderson, a little high, stolen away by Strand. Warrior ball now, 30 seconds left, up by six. Strand is fouled by Brown or Anderson, one of the two. It's gonna be on Brown, I think. Strand at the line for two now. It was on Brown, that is her second. First one by Strand, it's good. Second one also good. Warriors hitting some big free throws down the stretch. Otherwise this would be a much closer game. Farner with the steal. <clears throat> And the layup, which will seal this game, I think, makes it a 10-point lead with 15 seconds left. Anderson skips it over to Phillips. Stolen away by Strand. 10 seconds left. Now they just need to run the clock out. 
Bertrand will back off. Warner will dribble the ball out as the Warriors will win this game. That win tonight makes the Warriors record on the season 9-9 nine and nine, back at 500 with a chance to go over the last few games. They will be playing Elma at home on the 30th of January coming up. That'll be a tough one, but still four home games left for the Warriors. So please come on out and support. Please support the boys tomorrow night. And please just come on down if you're a basketball fan because we got three great games tonight and three more boys ones tomorrow followed by wrestling all day Saturday here as Arapaho hosts the Daryl Barnes invite. We'll be bringing you that one as well on our channel. 15 teams expected to be at that one. Meanwhile, we have Cambridge and Southwest warming up. Like I said, we will mute it during warmups, so we will mute it right now and we'll be back for the second game.
Welcome back. We are here for the second game this evening. <clears throat> Just tipped off. Cambridge, the away team. Southwest, the home team. Cambridge wins the tip. Kent passes it off to Cubic. Excuse me, Allmeyer had it out on the wing then into Cubic. Stolen away, though, by the Rough Riders. They'll bring the ball down the court. Lampy with it. Over to Gallegos. Finds Kira Nelms. And Gallegos misses. Little up and under action. Springer with the rebound, outlets it to Kent. Springer with the entry pass. Back out to Springer. Van Pelt brings the ball up the board for the up the court for the Rough Riders. Guy goes, takes it down the right side, kicks it back out. Atley Nelms misses the three. Offensive rebound by Guy goes, and she's fouled by Jalen Kent. That'll be the first team foul by either team. Lampy will take it out on the baseline. Van Pelt for three. Shot is long. Tipped ball, grabbed by Allmeyer. Mallory Springer brings it up. Two Springers starting for the Trojans. As a three taken by the other Springer. Springer. Now we have a fight for the ball. Allmeyer grabs it down low, puts it up and in. Makes it 2-2, or 4-0, excuse me. Yeah. 
Gaia goes into Atley Nelms. She's triple teamed. Someone's open. And we had a tip ball, so it'll stay here. We have Annika Nelms just checked in for Kira Nelms. And also into the game number 12 for Southwest, Peyton Truxka. Truxka is in for Lampy. Ryder's trying to set up some offense here. Van Pelt with it now. And she double dribbled. Ball will go back to the Trojans here. Excuse me, it is still 2 nothing early on. Only one made basket so far by Trojans. Brylin Springer to inbound it. Allmeyer ahead to Springer, now over to Kent. Skip pass over to Allmeyer on the right side. Drives baseline, kicks it out. Mallory Springer to Brylin Springer. Now Allmeyer with it in the corner. Springer on that right wing, back to Allmeyer. Need a ball reversal here, they get it. Kent with it now on the left side. Now Allmeyer in the other corner. Cubic, top of the key, over to Springer. Pump fake and drive, hands it off to Kent. Coming down the lane, puts it up, no good. Tips the ball, it's off a of Trojan. It's off Allmeyer. 5.05 left in the first quarter, still two nothing your score. That one foul on Jalen Kent, your only foul for either team so far. <clears throat> this is a rematch of an earlier season matchup where Southwest won at home 35 to 22. Great local rivalry as well. Trojans moving the ball around the top of the key. Kent with it at the top. Now Springer drives on that left side. Cubic, top of the key. Allmeyer dribbles it around. Now they reverse it. Kent drives that left side. Good job by Gallegos there on defense. Another reversal. Ryland Springer takes a three. Bounces off, but no one boxes out Kent. She cleans up the board. <clears throat> Four nothing after that make on the putback by Kent. Four minutes left in the first quarter. Allmeyer almost gets the tie up. She does force the steal though, stolen by Kubik, started by Allmeyer. Good pressure there by the Trojans. Cambridge, like I said, trying to get revenge for that earlier season loss. Lady Trojans sitting at 10 and six. The Lady Rough Riders at 11 and six. Cambridge beat Arapaho in the first round, I think by six or eight. Nice ball movement there from Annika Nelms into Atley for the finish. 4-2 your score, Rough Riders are on the board. Stolen away now. That was Nelms on the steal. She squares up, hands it off to Gallegos. Several subs checking in. Kira Nelms and Lampy set to check back in. As well as another several subs starting to check in for the Trojans. It's like one of the Holtz girls is checking in as well as Aspen Webb, I believe. Miss and defensive rebound by the Trojans. Outlet to Allmeyer. They get it across the timeline. Kent with a nice look down low to Brylin. Able to finish, turn around, post move, good. Good move down there. Good look by Kent. 6-2 after that make. Under three minutes left in the first. Truska on the right wing. Now Nelms on the corner. That was Annika Nelms into Atley Nelms, who's fouled by Springer, Brylin Springer. We got Webb in for Allmeyer. Holtz in for, Holtz is in for Cubic. Atley Nelms is out, as well as Truska. Excuse me, Van Pelt is the one that went out, not Truska. And that last foul was on Cubic. Sorry, I will get it right eventually. Hey. 
Three taken by Tresca, no good. Rebound by, Bri by Mallory Springer. Poked loose, but it will stay with the Trojans. Almost lost the ball, the Trojans did. Good pressure by Southwest, almost a 10 second call. They're getting dangerously close. Cambridge will take a timeout. Coach Hollander calls timeout. That'll be a partial 30 seconds. The Trojans coached by Kaylin Hollander, assisted by Logan Pabin. The Rough Riders coached by Dennis Hengen and assisted by Rudy Kennedy and Kim Barnett. If you're just joining us now, we will be bringing you all three games this evening on the same live stream. So keep it here. Uh, don't need to go anywhere. We'll do the same thing tomorrow night for the boys' action. Still have one more game left after this tonight, though. As we got the big game coming up next after this. Elman Southern Valley should be a good one. The winner advances to the RPAC Championship and wins the East Division. Gallegos almost got the steal. Kent saved it. Holtz with it now. Brooklyn Holtz. Now to Kent. Good ball movement inside out, back to Holtz, who hits it. Right on the baseline, that two was. Eight to two, your score after that make by Holtz. Under two minutes left in the first. Gallegos over to Tresca, left wing, guarded by Holtz. Now out to Nelms. Kieran Nelms drives and in. Good take there by Nelms. Jump ball forced. That was forced by Kira. Goes back to the Riders. Allmeyer checks back in. She goes in for Kent. Good to see Southwest being aggressive, driving in the lane. Definitely with the height advantage with all the Nelms girls. And when Arapo played them, Arapo beat them and they really didn't hurt us at all down low. I just couldn't believe they didn't go inside. Doing a much better job of that so far. Ball is knocked out. It'll be out on the baseline. Southwest inbounds at Tresco for three. It's good. One point game after that make by Bailey Tresco. Seven to eight your score. Trojans still out in front. <clears throat> Stolen away. As was started by Lampy. And she got the fast break attempt there, not able to finish. Under a minute left. Trap was coming, they get it out. Holtz lost it though. Stolen away by Kira. Annika actually. Now we're back the other way. Holtz is trapped in the gray area. Gets it out to Mallory. Wild scramble, Southwest is hustling all over on defense. Now we have, we have two Cambridge players that had the ball at the same time. Would have been a jump ball, but they were two players from the same team, so the ref was not gonna call that. Just kind of stood there for a second. I think we finally did have a jump ball called after they got out of that. Holtz with it, her pass was tipped. Allmeyer saves it, gets it into Springer. No good. <clears throat> Brylin Springer with the miss. Lampy brings it up the other way. Truska, good look into Atley Gnomes. Bounces out, saved by Lampy. good hustle. That was a miss by Van Pelt there to end our first quarter. So that'll be our score at the end of the one is Cambridge eight, Southwest seven. We got a good one so far. On the west side right now, we have Dundee County Stratton playing Hitchcock County. That game is in Hitchcock County. All the west games today and tomorrow will be in Hitchcock County. All the east games today and tomorrow will be in Arapahoe. Girls is tonight, boys is tomorrow. Our first game this evening, we had Arapahoe beating Bertrand. 
I think it was about a 10 point game. Warriors won by about 10 at the end. Was pretty close all throughout though. And then on the west side, Wallace ended up beating Maxwell by about five or six. Try to get you a score update as we continue from the west side. And then again, we'll be having Elma and Southern Valley immediately after this on the same live stream, so keep it right here. No need to go anywhere. We will mute it during warm-ups and halftime to avoid copyright with music. So don't worry if you hear it muted during halftimes and warm-ups. We will be announcing all three games tonight and tomorrow, though. And I think our next game, we might even have some student announcers joining us. Van Pelt gets it to Lampy. She'll reset. Over to Van Pelt. Southwest looks a little confused, trying to get into their offense here. Atley Nelms drives. Nice dump pass to Tresca. No good. Outlet to Jalen Kent. She'll push the pace. Crosses the timeline. Gets it to Springer. Nice look in there. <clears throat> Great look for Cubic. It's not able to finish. Allmeyer jumps that passing lane, takes it coast to coast, rolls out, gets her own rebound up and short off of Allmeyer. Good hustle there by Allmeyer, just not able to finish. We have Gallegos back in. Gallegos and Annika Nelms back in as Kirill sit, as well as Truska. Van Pelt over to Gallegos. <clears throat> oh, Annika's down. She hit her head or something. She looks like she's in some pain. Looks like she took a shot in the back of the head, maybe got an elbow. She's a little shaken up. She's able to get up on her own, which is good. Walking off, it's still pretty shaken up. Good to see her get up though. On the west side, the final game tonight will be Maywood Hayes Center and Paxton. The winner to that, of that game will go to the championship on Saturday in McCook. The loser will head to the consolation game. Same with our last one tonight. The loser of Elma and Southern Valley goes to the consolation game. The winner advances to the RPAC championship. Back to the game here. Lampy takes a long two, no good, long. Rebound, Allmeyer. Kent ahead to Springer. Allmeyer into the other Springer. Great finish. Brylin Springer with another good look down low. She's had some good post moves when she's gotten the ball. Chance for an and one here. That foul was on Atley Nums, her first. Springer's free throw is long. Rebound by Atley. Lampy ahead to Gallegos. She'll drive into the corner. Out to Lampy. Now Van Pelt will reset. Gets it over to Kira Nelms. Nelms goes up, good take. Riders in some pressure. Trojans really haven't been affected by it too much, but active hands by the Riders have forced several steers, steals in the half court. <clears throat> Offensive rebound by Cambridge results in two more points. 
excuse me tonight. Uh, sorry if my voice is a little weak as I am fighting a little bit of a cold. We'll power through it. Try to bring you all the action today. Atley Nelms with it now. Lampy at the top of the key. Over to Kira Nelms for three. Shot looked good, but was long. Offensive rebound by Gallegos. That was tipped by Van Pelt. Now tried to save it with Springer. And Gallegos grabbed it before going back. <clears throat> I think she'd established possession and then step back over. I think that was a good call. Some of the fans didn't like it. Twelve nine, your score. Lady Trojans ahead by three. Five minutes left in this first half. Almeyer thought about the three, decides to pass it to Kent in the corner. Long two, no good. Holtz, Holtz and Tresca fight for the ball. <clears throat> Another jump ball keeps it here with the Trojans. Inbound from Almeyer into Cubic. Now to Holtz. Oh, tough pass there to Springer. Bryland saves it off Atley Nelms. Great save. That was a tough pass. The right, I, I mean, a good idea, but sometimes those bounce passes through the lane in traffic do not end well. Especially if you're a post player like me with lineman hands. Kent thought about the three. That would have been a long two, actually. Holtz top the key into Allmeyer. Turns around mid post. Bounces in, gets the shooter's roll. 14 to nine. Trojans extend that lead. Nelms with it. Kira Nelms blocked by Brylin. <coughs> Had a foul on the Trojans. That was on Allmeyer. Her first, only the first team foul this quarter for Cambridge. Southwest also sitting at one currently. Gallegos takes the three, way long. Rebound Mallory Springer. Ahead to Brooklyn Holtz. Mallory over to Allmeyer, now into Kent, into Brylin. Good, great ball movement. Great look, even better finish. Van Pelt to Gallegos, she's on the right wing, guarded by Kent. Screen and roll from Atley Nelms. She's looking for Atley, good look, found her. Not able to finish, great look though. Trojans pushing the pace now, Brooklyn Holtz on the baseline. Tipped away by Atley, saved by Kent. Oh, she gives her a little arm. They didn't call that, she shoved her out of the way with the arm, totally should have been an offensive foul. But the Riders get a steal. Truska gets it out to Van Pelt, who spots up for three air ball. Not sure if that's the look they wanted there, but ball is about to go out, so she was just trying to throw it up and hope for a rebound, I think. Riders down by nine, 16 to nine your score. Lady Trojans out in front. Oh, bad pass by Holt, stolen away by Truska. Van Pelt brings it up again in that same corner. This time she finds Kira Nelms. Great job running the floor by Nelms. Under three minutes left in the first, 11 to 16 your score after that make. Southwest fans wanted a walk by Springer. Doesn't matter though as they threw it out of bounds there. Go back to the Riders as Lampy is back in for Van Pelt. Southwest with the size advantage, uh, but Southwest a younger team overall. Cambridge with four seniors, Southwest only with two. Always like to see how old the team is, how much they have coming back next year. Almost a travel there by Lampy. Atley Nelms finds Kira. Great inside out. That's a long two. Draws iron, but no good. That was Tresca. Cambridge with it now. They got to take care of the ball. 
Southwest active hands have been forcing a lot of steals on the side. All in the half court, really, too. Jumping those passing lanes, jumping that lob pass, too, just like that, but they save it. And they get it again. Threw it right into a double team there. Gallegos just grabbed it. Truska on that left wing, getting the pick and roll from Kira Nelms. Tried to skip it to Lampy in the corner, way, way high, out of reach. Go back the Trojan way here. Good crowd on hand tonight. I expect it to keep filling in before our final game tonight. Weather is awesome. Come on down. Allie Nels jumped that pass. Truska had it, but then Brylin Springer saves it. Great take, but no good. She gets her own rebound, though. Holtz is fouled by Kira Nelms. Second team foul by the Lady Rough Riders. Cambridge with it on the baseline. Holtz will take it out. I believe that is Kira's first. It is. Van Pelt is back in for Gallegos. Riders packing the paint on the inbounds, but Kent gets it right there. A little spin move up and in. Packing the paint didn't affect Kent. Nice move there. Van Pelt dribbles right in, no one picked up ball. She gets on the corner, good looking to Atley, no good. Offensive rebound, no good. Third, off third shot, no good. Three great looks there. Just gotta be able to finish. Mallory Springer head to Holtz. She got bailed out by a foul call. She's about to dribble right out of bounds. Annika Nelms is looking like she's kind of gathered herself on the sidelines, got an ice pack on that head, but probably won't see her in this first half. Cambridge loses the ball out of bounds. They'll go back the right way. Van Pelt will bring it up. 35 seconds left in the first half. Riders down by seven. Screen and roll, Lampy and Nelms. Truska over to Van Pelt. Van Pelt, a little off balance pass, able to get it to Atley. Shot is blocked. That was blocked by Kent, I believe. And we have a jump ball forced by Brylin Springer and Kira Nelms. Stays here with the Riders. Lampy over to Van Pelt. Back to Lampy, long two. Air ball. Uh, Springer tried to save it. I don't know. I don't think she needed to because I don't think there was a tip on that. Instead, it goes, stays here after that. Kira Nelms, nice take, no good, rolls out. Oh. Lampy is going to be called for a foul. There's a fight for the ball, and she kind of twisted uh, Holtz around. So that is going to be a foul on Lampy. Her first. <clears throat> that is the fourth team foul this quarter on Southwest, but four seconds left. Kent took that shot way too early. She still had about three seconds left. Instead, the ball goes out of bounds with 1.1 seconds left back to Southwest. Got to be aware of the clock in that situation. Atley Nelms with the long pass to Kira. She does get a shot off, no good. We'll end our first half like that, 11 to 18. Good game so far. Cambridge able to keep Southwest at arm's reach though that whole first half. See if Southwest can make some adjustments and get back in this game. A lot going on at Arapaho this week as the girls are Pac East Finals tonight, the boys are Pac East Finals tomorrow night, and then the Daryl Barnes Wrestling Invite, our home wrestling meet, will be on Saturday all day. We have 15 teams at least coming, so all kinds of stuff. We'll be bringing you it all on our YouTube channel, so please subscribe for updates. Also, if you're in the area, come on down. The RPAC art display is also on display in the south hallway on the south side of our gym.
So if you're here over the next three days, check out all the great artwork by the ARPAC students. It may only be East School's art, art displays, but there's all kinds of great displays. I just made a post about it, so go check it out. We'll meet up for halftime. We'll be back for the second half.
All right, we're about to start the second half here. We'll try to get a score update on the west side, Dundee County Stratton playing Hitchcock County right now in Hitchcock County. Maywood Hayes Center and Paxton will be the last game there tonight. We have Elma and Southern Valley coming up after this, so stay tuned. Got a good one on hand though right now. Two great local rivalry games to end the night tonight. Cambridge and Southwest and Elman Southern Valley. Cubic saved it there, stole it back. And it results in two, Brylin Springer with another good take. Good hustle by Cubic. Pass by Van Pelt, stolen away by Springer. Kent brings it up ahead to Mallory. Loses it out of bounds. 11 20 year score. One minute into this third quarter. Van Pelt almost had it tied up. Lampy resets. Now Kieran Elms, great take. Draws some. A foul on Springer. Great aggressiveness by Kira tonight, just taking it through, finishing through some contact. She gets two rewarded with two shots here at the free throw line. Both three free throws are made by Kira. 13 to 20 after those two makes. Trojans get it across against the pressure. Kent set the, sets things up. Springer looking over to Kent. Now into Bryland Springer. Out to Mallory Springer for three. Air ball, but Cubic had it, lost it out of bounds. They'll go back to Southwest. Van Pelt dribbles around, guarded by Allmeyer. Good defense. Kent jumps that pass. Fast break, Wolf. Gallegos pokes it loose. It will stay with the Trojans, though. So we have a sub checking in. Truska is in for Van Pelt. And Annika Nelms is back in the game for Atley Nelms. Good to see Annika back in. She took a shot to the head in the first half. She almost got the steal there on the inbounds. Brylin out to Allmeyer. Kent drives right down the middle, dump pass off to Cubic. shot no good, long. Rebound Kira. Truska has it pokes loose by Kent, saved by Kira Nelms. Kent almost had that one. Both teams really jumping those passing lanes tonight. Guy goes pick and roll for Monica. Monica puts it up. Good job by Brylin going straight up. Jalen Kent brings it up. She'll slow the pace. Oh, she won't. She'll look inside for Springer. Miss. The other Springer misses. Mallory with the first one. Brylin with the second attempt. Both no good. Lampy over to Tresca for three. It's good. Much needed points, much needed offense for the Rough Riders. Cambridge scrambling in transition. They were able to take advantage there, 16 to 20. Gallegos gets a steal right away. Puts it up and misses. Rebound by Brylin Springer. Stolen away again, this time by Kira Nelms. She'll take it, draws contact. That's gonna be a body foul on Allmeyer, I believe. Kirill head to the line for two more. That is Allmeyer's second foul, the second team foul on Cambridge this quarter. We just I just got a bowling update. Like I said, the 
Arapaho bowling team had their last home duel today. They'll have districts next week. The girls beat Ogallala 16 and a half to 4.5. Lauren had a high game of 197. She averaged 177. The boys lost a close one. Arapaho was up by nine to seven going into the Baker's portion. They ended up losing nine to 12. Leo Rathbun did set a new PR, bowled a 187. The bowlers will head to Lexington for districts on Wednesday. So come on out to Lexington to support our bowlers on Wednesday. The girls are looking to repeat as district champions. Only two classes in bowling, so we are class B. Back to this game, 18 to 20, two point game. Inbound into Allmeyers, three is way long. Rebound by Lampy. She was trying to find Tresca, she didn't see it. Kent found it. Cubic, good stop. Good jump stop, little ball fake, put it up. 18-22, back to a four-point lead for the Trojans. Kent almost had that one again. Lampy, pick and roll for Monica. Truska gets the screen from Lampy. Lampy resets. Holtz is checking back in, Brooklyn Holtz is. Truska for three in the corner again, it's good. <clears throat> She's heating up, that's two in a row. 21-22, one-point game again. Under four left in the third quarter of play. Kent gets it across the timeline. Now to Allmeyer. She drives. Well, loses it. Saves it. She's in the corner with it. Gets it out to Kent. She was looking in for Springer. Kira Nelms knocked that one away. Lampy brings it up. Truska over to Kira. She'll take a three. No good. Long rebound grabbed by Gallegos. Into Kieran Helms, but Kent jumped it. Good job by Kent there. No call. Mallory saved it into Brylin, and then we had a jump ball forced by Annika Nelms. Van Pelt and Atley Nelms in. Brooklyn Holtz in. Aspen Webb in as well. It's Kent. And Springer take a seat. Truska, another three. That's on fire, folks. That's three in a row. Keep feeding her the rock. It's like Tomonaga out there. Or CJ Wilcher or Rank Mast. That shot puts Southwest up by two, 24-22. Allmeyer needs help. She's trapped. She picked up her dribble there, gets it out to Webb. Now she's in trouble. But she's bailed out with a foul. That's going to be called on Lampy. That's the second team foul on Southwest, two as well on Cambridge. <clears throat> Anna Canelms poked that ball back out up but it will stay with the Trojans. Now they'll take it out on the side. Webb to inbound. Allmeyer drives, finds Springer, back out to Webb. Good ball movement. Reverse it, reverse it. They do get the reversal to Holtz. Now Mallory Springer. Webb in the corner. Allmeyer thought about it and shoots it. Three rolled it just in and out. Rebound Van Pelt. Ahead to Lampy. Truska for three again. That's four in a row. That has totally flipped the script on this game. All of a sudden, Southwest has a five point lead. Someone's got to get out on her. Cambridge gets a little flustered and they throw it out of bounds. We're going to have a timeout by Cambridge. Coach Hollander wants to talk things over, just settle everyone down. They got to talk about their defense. They got to find Truska right now. And Southwest pressure is giving them fits as well. <clears throat> I'm really earning my keep tonight trying to announce this game. It's always tough when you have uh, siblings with the same last name. Luckily, I've done these uh, 
games several times this year. I've had both Cambridge and Southwest so far, so at least I'm a little familiar, but we had three Nelms on the court, two Springers, and then the Holtz girl also a twin, so it's hard keeping track of all of them, so please bear with me. Gallegos was looking for Kira Nelm, stolen away by Brylin Springer. Pass was intended for Brooklyn Holtz. She just lost it out of bounds there. Head back the southwest way. Holtz is out. I think Mallory Springer just came back in for her, one of the Springers. Tresca, they're out on her this time. We're gonna have a foul on Cambridge. I believe that's on Allmeyer. Third team foul on Cambridge. One more to give before they're in the bonus. Holtz is right back in for Allmeyer with those three fouls. Tresca for three again. Oh, rolled out. You got to let her take that, though. She's feeling it. It was a good look. Oh, there now Van Pelt took along too. That trap just giving them fits as the Southwest gets another steal. Kira ahead to Gallegos, finishes and one. Great look, great job pushing the pace. We are just working on that in junior high boys practice today, just pushing the ball in transition, getting your head up, looking for that pass ahead. Great job there. Chance for and one here, the old fashioned three point play by Gallegos. Gets the shooter's roll. She finishes it 30 to 22 after that make. Atley Nelms with the steal, poked back out by Cubic. Oh! Oh, <laughs> that, I think they missed that one. Yeah, that should be Southwest ball. They're correcting it now. They're correcting it. 101 left in the third quarter, 30 to 22. Southwest has flipped a five point deficit. I think they were down at halftime to an eight point lead in one quarter. Southwest won the first matchup at home on January 5th, right after Christmas break, 35 to 22. Several chances there, no good for Southwest. Cambridge has to stop the bleeding here. They just haven't even got a good look in a long time. Springer with it. G good move, it's the best look they've had in a while. Cubic had it, fell down, that's gonna be a walk. Oh, she doesn't want the help up. Kira tried to help her up. Cubic had no part of it, I love I love good sportsmanship, but I also love a little chippiness, playing with a chip on your shoulder. This is a rivalry game, like I said. I have all kinds of great Cambridge versus Republican Valley matchups on my YouTube channel. Check out Reed Stagemeyer. Uh, look in the live chat if you want a direct link. All kinds of great battles between those two teams. Seven seconds left now in the quarter. Cambridge has the ball. Kent. Thought about the three, drives, great take. Finish, good. 30 to 24, that'll be the end of our third. A wild third quarter, Southwest really picked up the pace, led by Truska, who hit four threes in that third quarter. I think she might've hit one earlier too. She might be at five threes now on the night. <clears throat> Kira Nelms also has a three on the night. But Southwest has done a good job driving, not settling for threes. Kira Nelms has been driving inside. Cambridge really not able to find Brylin Springers. That's been their main offense tonight. Kent had a couple good takes towards the end. They're gonna need Kent to kind of take over and distribute. She needs to drive, look for that kick or look for Brylin down low to get back in this game. Still only a two possession game. But stay right here as we have 
the main event tonight, Elma and Southern Valley. That should be a good one. The winner advances to the RPAC Finals on Saturday in McCook. That's at the M McCook Community College at the Graff Events Center. The loser of the next game will head to the Constellation Round, also on Saturday in McCook. See if we can get you a score update from the west side. Again, Wallace beat Maxwell in the first game in Hitchcock County. Dundee County, Stratton, and Hitchcock County playing as we speak. Boys action will also be in Hitchcock County tomorrow night. We will also host the boys East Finals here in Arapahoe tomorrow. Cambridge lost the ball out of bounds on the far side. Screen and roll from Annika Nelms and Gallegos gets it to Annika. She brings it back out, needs some help. Finds her sister, Kira, bounces off her leg. Just an unfortunate bounce there. Trojans got to capitalize. Kent ahead to Mallory. She'll get it across. Guarded by Annika. Kira Nelms jumped that lane. Good steal. Outlet to Tresca. Now Lampy will bring it up. Lampy over to Tresca. Gallegos now. Lampy setting things up. Doesn't take the screen. Drives baseline instead. Now kicks it out to Kira for three. That is a three. It's good. That makes it a nine-point game. Trojans got to cut into this lead. Kent takes it all the way. Would have been good in the NBA, but that's going to be a foul on the floor. Trojans take it out on the baseline. Springer gets it in. Kent back to Springer for corner. I think that's a three. Oh, just rolled out so close. Brylin Springer cleans it up, though. There she is. She's done a little bit of everything for him tonight, really holding the post down. Guy goes screen and roll from Monica Nelms. Truska now. Good look into Annika. Back out to Truska. She got a three, no good. That would have been her sixth three of the game, I believe. <clears throat> Kent takes it, kicks it back out to Cubic. Cubic travels. We have a couple subs in, Atlee Nelms, Van Pelt is back in, Kira Nelms takes a seat, as well as Gallegos. Again, I apologize for my voice, fighting a little bit of a crud, but we're going to power through it. Got one more game tonight and three more tomorrow. I do have one of my student announcers on the way, though. I think she'll be here by the last game. Seven-point game, under six minutes left. And Lampy lost it out of bounds there. Skip pass over to Allmeyer. Facing some pressure, they gotta get it across, they do. Mallory Springer over to Kent. Springer takes the three, it looks good, too long. Lampy hands it off to Van Pelt. Lampy gets the screen from Atlee Nelms. Stolen away by Mallory Springer. Oh, Cubic should have ran right through the lane there. Kent looking for help. She'll take it herself. She's fouled. I think that is Van Pelt with the foul. It's on the floor.
we're going to have a full timeout by Southwest. Coach Hengen wants to talk it over. It'll be Cambridge ball on the baseline. Just got a score update for you. In the West uh, Division, girls action in Hitchcock County. It looks like Dundee County is up on Hitchcock County at the end of the third quarter. Dundee County just had a three point play as time expired in the third, so that puts them up 36 to 28. Dundee County up by eight points over Hitchcock. Maywood Hayes Center will be playing Paxton in the final game there this evening. Under five minutes left in this game. Still a seven point lead for Southwest. Cambridge has got to get something going on offense. Springer drives the baseline. Allmeyer thought about the three, instead gets it into Mallory Springer. Trapped on the baseline. Allmeyer thought about it again. Now Mallory Springer takes the three. Hits rim, no good. Fight for the ball. I thought we had a jump ball, but we're gonna have a foul called. Foul on Cambridge, I believe. Kira Nelms and Gallegos checking back in. Truska takes a seat as well as Annika Nelms. Now Aspen Webb back in for a cubic. <clears throat> Tomorrow night we'll also be hosting the boys RPAC East finals. We'll start off with Med Valley and Bertrand followed by Arapahoe in Southern Valley, and then our final game, Elma and Cambridge, with the winner advancing to the championship. That is the boys' action that will be taking place tomorrow. Times are all the same. We'll do the same thing again tomorrow with all three live streams on the same one. That way you don't have to switch it every game. Screen and roll. Lampy roll reset. Riders in no hurry here. We got about 200 people watching the live stream, so thanks for everyone that's tuning in. Kira Nelms, great take there. She's really been aggressive tonight compared to the first game I watched this year. Springer misses another three. Allmeyer misses it, now blocked by Kira Nelms. Fight for the ball, Allmeyer had it, and they're gonna give him a timeout. Allmeyer had possession, they say. Coach Hollander wanted the timeout. They give it to her. They get it underneath, I think. She's asking. Yes. Full timeout by Coach Hollander. Drawing up and out of bounds play on the baseline. Trojans find themselves down by nine. Under three minutes left. If you missed the first half, uh, the Lady Trojans were up by five or seven points at halftime. And then Southwest totally flip, flipped the script in the third quarter, led by Tresca, who hit four threes in the third quarter. <clears throat> like I said, I, one of my student announcers is on the way back. Uh, Grace Andrews, I believe, will be joining us for the third and final game this evening. It's actually some relation, uh, second cousin once removed. <laughs> My mom was in Andrews. She's actually, I think she had some track stuff going on at UNK. She's actually the granddaughter of the Holbrook Hornets legend, Mike Chambers, who almost single-handedly 
Mike Chambers almost single-handedly won state track by himself for the Holbrook Hornets. That was in 1979. I believe that was actually the last year of yards before they switched to meters. I think he won the 110, the 220, and the 440 that year. Aspen Webb hits a three. That's what they needed. Big three by Aspen Webb there. Makes the lead only six. Still a two possession game. Allmeyer just picked up her fourth foul. Gallegos hands it off to Van Pelt. Into Kieran Elms. She's tied up. No jump ball call yet. Lost possession. That's not a travel. Into Lampy. Tipped away by Kent. Stays here. Guy goes, pump fakes, hands it off to Van Pelt again. Looks like Kira Nelms had a bloody nose. Looks like they got it taken care of though. Screen and roll, Van Pelt and Nelms. Riders taking their time. Trojans gotta get a steal. Almost had a chance there. Atley Nelms almost traveled. Keeps her pivot foot. Gets it back out to Gallegos. Lampy is trapped. Uh oh, long pass. Nelms saves it. She goes into the bleachers. And Brylin Springer able to finish. Nelms is up. Glad to see she's okay. But just like that, we have a game on our hands again. Four point game. 135 left. Southwest Rough Riders lead 35 to 31 over the Cambridge Trojans. <clears throat> Great crowd on hand and it keeps filling up. We haven't even started the last game yet, folks. And I think a lot of people are gonna stick around for the last one as well. <clears throat> Both teams with only two fouls apiece so far in the quarter. But several players, like Allmeyer has four, I don't think Southwest is in too much foul trouble. <clears throat> we talked about before the records, but in case you missed it, Cambridge is 10 and six on the season. Southwest is 11 and six. Cambridge is in class D2 this year. Southwest is in class D1. In our next game, uh, Southern Valley is in class D1. And I believe Elma is also in D1, they are. But in our final game, Southern Valley 16 and one, Elma 15 and one. Elma's only loss coming to 13 and three, Elm Creek by six. Southern Valley's only loss coming to 12 and three, Class C1, Gothenburg. And they have not played each other this year. They will play each other again soon, but they have not played. Brylin Springer with a great block. Trojans have the ball, down by four. They get it across. Trojans wanted a foul call. Holtz fell down. Van Pelt almost jumped that pass. Holtz pump fakes. Oh, found Springer backside. Got it. Two point game. Trojans got to get back though. They get the pressure. Nelms is across half court. <clears throat> she has it poked loose by Springer. That was Mallory Springer. We're gonna have another timeout by Southwest as we are sitting at 101 on the clock, 35-33. Southwest won the first meeting, 35-22 to over Cambridge. So Cambridge looking for revenge. They had the lead the whole first half and then lost it and have had to claw their way back into this one.
still two fouls apiece for each team. So neither team in danger of uh, having someone in the bonus yet. Cambridge is going to be ramping up the pressure even more, though. Lampy to inbound it, gets it into Gallegos, guarded by Jalen Kent. Oh, they wanted a carry, I think. Or they wanted to foul. They wanted her to foul the... I think they wanted her to foul Lampy. They do get a foul on her. They still got a couple to give, though. But they wanted the foul right away because they still have a couple to give, I guess. You can go for a steal, though. It doesn't have to be right away. Kira Nelms with it. She's fouled by Springer. <clears throat> I don't know why Cambridge is just fouling right away. I would give it five seconds. I mean, there is still 50 seconds left, but hey, Southwest has hit their free throws tonight. But that's what you got to do at this point. Steal by Kent. Back backside look to Springer. Oh, short. Offensive rebound, though. Jump ball. Timeout by Coach Hollander. They say Allmeyer had possession, gave her the timeout. So it'll be Cambridge ball down by two with 43 seconds left in this game. Cambridge ball on the baseline. Coach Hollander drawing something up right now. Southwest talking over their defense. I'm assuming they are gonna pack the paint. Still got to be aware of those threes as a three will put Cambridge up. Cannot lose a shooter. Cambridge has not hit a lot of threes. Aspen Webb did hit one recently, though. We're at over 240 people watching right now. So we got a good one on hand. We got another great one coming up. A huge game, another rivalry game, Southern Valley and Alma. Again, those two teams have not played this season. They will play again on February 2nd at Alma. Alma, 15 and one, Southern Valley, 16 and one. Southern Valley made it to state in class C2 last year, dropping down to class D1 this year. So you gotta think as of right now, they're pretty close to a lock. I mean, they're in good position in the wild card for sure even if they get tripped up in districts. I know Southern Valley is in Arapahoe's sub-district. Webb loses it, stolen away by Van Pelt. She almost walked with it, gets it to Gallegos. 35 seconds left. Kent gets Gallegos on the face. That'll put Gallegos at the line for two. Gallegos misses the first one. There's still life left. Cambridge still has hope. Down by two. One more. It's good. Three-point game. Still don't need a three at this point. They, would, they wouldn't mind one, but you don't absolutely need one yet. But you got to be quick with it. Springer drives. Poked loose, stolen by Van Pelt. She'll take it. Ken is flying in. She kicks it out to Lampy. Takes a long two. Why did she shoot that? She did not need to shoot that. Oh, Springer traveled with it. <clears throat> that was a lucky break there for Southwest. As all they need to do is run out the clock and get fouled. I mean, I get it if it's a layup, but that was a long jump shot. Van Pelt. Trapper. Oh, the Tie up, jump ball. Stays with Southwest though. And it's getting a little chippy here, folks. Gallegos just got rolled over 
on that jump ball. <clears throat> this is some good old fashioned RVL basketball right here. If you don't know, the R pack came around from the RVL and the G pack. And it looks like Springer, Brylin Springer, just fouled Kyra Nelms. Kira Nelms, excuse me. So with 6.8 seconds left, Kyra Nelms heads to the line. That foul was actually on Aspen Webb, her first. First one is good. Ice in her veins from the sophomore. The six foot sophomore. Three Nelmses in the starting lineup. We got two Springers for Cambridge. It's hard keeping track of all these names. Second one is missed. Rebound though, Southwest, and we have a travel by Lampy. So with 3.8 seconds left, Cambridge is down by four with the ball. Ken ahead, stolen by Atlee Nelms. That'll be game. She'll sit there, run out the clock. Cambridge does not get their revenge. Southwest wins this one, 37 to 33. Sweeping Cambridge for the season. Great battle, back and forth. That was a fun one to watch, and I'm excited to see the next one. As we got Elman Southern Valley about ready to tip off. I really haven't watched either one of these uh, teams, Elma or Southern Valley, play this year. I was in the other gym during our holiday tournament. I didn't get to watch them last year either, so I'm excited to see them play. So just a reminder that we will be muting the audio during warm-ups and halftime. We don't want to have any copyright stuff with warm-up music, so we just mute it, gives us a break, and hopefully my voice holds up through the last game. Like I said, I have reinforcements. Uh, Grace Andrews is on her way to help me announce this last one. Should be a good one. Oh, she just rolled in, just like that. So we'll, we'll mute this, we'll take a break, and we'll be back for the third and final game of the evening. Stay with us.
All right, folks, we are about ready to get started with the main event this evening. We have the 15 and one Elma Cardinals versus the 16 and one Southern Valley Eagles. Our Pac East Finals winner advances to the championship. Loser moves on to the, on Saturday, yep. I'm also joined by my student announcer, Grace Andrews. She's here to help me as my voice is failing. <laughs> Mr. Stagmar is a little under the weather, but we're gonna pull through it. <laughs> We're getting ready for the starting lineups, so we will let you listen. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Arapaho, the Yard Pack East Girls Final Game. We would first like to recognize Ag Valley as the corporate sponsor of the Republican Plains Activity Conference. Our final game features the visitor on the scoreboard, the Southern Valley Eagles. And your home team on the scoreboard, the Alma Cardinals. I would like to welcome our visitors and introduce Southern Valley starters first. Number one, Vanessa Aguayo. Number two, Anne Bowes. Number four, Addie Hunt. Number five, Corey Bowes. Number 24, Bryn Bailey. The Eagles are coached by Richie McDonald, assisted by Justin Allen and Ashley Huerta. to Alma. Number one, Cameron Scott. Number 12, Addison Seagull. Number 21, Pearson Moore. Number 22, Chase Moulton. Number 23, Riley Scott. The Cardinals are coached by Amanda Seagull, assisted by Brennan Johnson and Madeline Bruce. Starters quick. I couldn't see. Let's play basketball. So for jump, we have Hunt and Moore. And Eagles with the ball first. And Bose bring the ball down. Back up to Bose. She'll set up her, her offense. <clears throat> Pass it into other Bows and Pass it to Hunt. Go back over to Aguayo. Back up to Bose. And it's Tori Bose, and she made it to you It is loud in here, Grace. Yes, it is. We got a huge crowd on hand. Big game, big rivalry game. Good backside look. These two teams are in the same sub district. So. Yeah, we just looked. These two teams, like she said, same sub district. Two of the top teams in class D1. Hunt takes it all the way on the fast break. Coast to coast, left hand side. Four nothing early on, Southern Valley leads. <clears throat> Scott with it now. Over, oh, and stolen by Bose. He'll go up and she'll be fouled. <clears throat> she'll go to the line. That foul was on Cameron Scott, her first, first team foul by either team. Scott, only a freshman. <clears throat> First one. Goes with her second. That one rolls out. 
Rebound by Molzon, stolen away. Aguayo finishes. <clears throat> Assist from Hunt. And Aguayo gets a deflection there. Southern Valley, perfect start, already up 7-0. Southern Valley's only loss is to Class C1 Gothenburg, who is 12 and 3. Elma's only loss to 13 and 3 Elm Creek, who's also in D1. <clears throat> Molzon out to Scott. She'll take a three. No good. Rebound Molzon. To number 21, Moore. Now back out. Siebel's now to Scott. And she'll be blocked by Bose. And We'll have Ann Bowes bring the ball down. Corey Bowes with a three. Good. <clears throat> it is loud. <clears throat> We're just going to let you guys hear this. Rankings, Alma is number one, and Southern Valley is number two for seedings wise in our pack. But whoever wins this game advances to the championship in McCook tomorrow, or on Saturday. And while boys games here tomorrow. <clears throat> but it'll be Alma ball still. Scott to bring the ball down. Trapped by Bose. Just, just steal it. She just ripped it away from her. Nice look to Hunt. Great assist by the Hastings College Commit, you yeah, said? Anne is going to play college basketball at Hastings next year. <laughs> Mozan has it knocked away. Stolen by Tori Bowes. Anne Bowes bring the ball down. Now to Bose on the left, now to Tori Bose. Just shooting three. And now an air ball, but Bailey get it up. Again. And she'll get it. <clears throat> Bailey cleaning it up down there. It's two attempts, able to finish on the second. Uh, we have Moore stuck. She'll pass into. Uh, Molzon. Great look yeah. for Molzon, but offensive rebound by Riley Scott, able to finish. Excuse me, that was Moore. Moore with the cleanup there. Alma's first points for the board, and now into Bailey. Back out to Hunt. Pass it back to Anbos. Just shoot it. Close one, but Siebels with the rebound. Good rebound there by Siebels. 14 to 2, your score. Five minutes left in this first quarter. Great floater there. Is that Scott? That was Cameron Scott with the floater on the baseline. <laughs> Hunt on the left wing into Bailey. Back out to Bose. She'll shoot and that'll be air ball, but rebound by Moore. Moore will bring the ball down. She has Riley Scott on the backside. And she'll make it. She didn't need her. She took it all the way. <clears throat> and Bose bring the ball down. Just like that, 14 to 6. Cardinals climb back in it. They get a deflection. Almost jump ball. Bailey now into Bose. Oh. She'll be fouled by Mozon. Mozon. I thought that was a clean block by Molzon, honestly. Maybe she got her with the body. They're saying she got her with the body a little bit. That is her first, the second team foul on Elma of this quarter. Under four minutes left in the quarter, 14-6. Tori votes the first free throw is good. She'll have another one. And lots of subs. We have Whitney and... Stalder checked in. Yeah. Stalder's in for Bailey. Second one is missed by Bose. Well, Whitney. She passed it into Moore. Back oh. oh. 
almost a good pass, but right through her fingers. Good idea, tough pass to make, but she almost had it. Um, Bose, bring the ball up. The senior. Pass over to Hunt in the right wing. And Bose put it in to her sister Tori. She'll go up, no good. More. Tie up. Oh, foul. <clears throat> foul, foul on Ann Bowes. That is her first. Only the first team foul on Southern Valley. Cameron Scott is back in for the Cardinals. And Hammond <clears throat> is in for Aguayo for Southern Valley. Riley Scott goes out. Cameron checked in for Riley Scott. Siebel's in the middle, back out to Scott on the right wing. She needs Cameron help. Scott stuck. Oh. And they're at call. <clears throat> well, Southern Valley ball. She tried saving it off of Hammond as she was going out of bounds, but they say it touched her last. Elma fans not happy with that. Cameron Scott couldn't believe it. Steal by the Cardinals. Oh, Bose with the block. And Bose with the block. And we're going to have a push foul on the Cardinals. Uh, I don't know which one they're going to call it on, but. We'll see who that one is on. Three. So, Miley Whitney. First foul. And <clears throat> we have Lily Holsey in. And Riley Scott just came back in for Whitney. <clears throat> Uh, Ambo's bring the ball up. He'll pass it. Oh. Deflection. Blocked by Moore, and it'll be Eagle Ball. <clears throat> and the stands are packed. So, good luck finding a room if you're coming. <laughs> uh, Bo's pass into Hammond. Hey, will shoot the three, and that will go off the rim. Uh, rebound by Moore, or Scott. Scott. Yeah, Riley, Riley Scott. Scott. And Siebels will have it, now Riley Scott. Pass it into Siebels. Good move at the high post. She'll almost make that in, but rebound by Lily Hulsey, and both bring the ball up. Oh, offensive. Yep, yep. That's the second on Ambose already. Two big fouls on Ambose in the first quarter. <clears throat> Only two fouls on Southern Valley. We got several subs back in. <clears throat> Molzon is out. Hammond is out. And Ambose is out with those two fouls. Cardinals got to take advantage right now. Oh, that's over and back. They missed that. That was over and back. Riley Scott misses a three. Rebound, Addie Rebound. Hunt. Hunt will bring the ball down with Ambos on the bench. Um, and up to Bose. She'll pass it to Bailey. Bailey will look at Hunt. Hunt will almost shoot that three. Goes in and she'll make it. <clears throat> nice baseline drive by Hunt. Will step through, able to put it up and in off the glass. More, uh, Scott shoots a three. Long three, oh, long shoot. rebound. Rebound by Moore. Siebels Scott. is calling for it. Scott, nice through the defense. She's going to draw a foul. <clears throat> Cameron Scott headed to the line for two. It's both teams with three team fouls apiece. That foul was on Lily Holstein. First one is good. And we'll have some subs. <clears throat> so about a minute 37 left of the first, and we have Eagles leading still. Mm. Um, we'll have Hammond come in for Holstie, and I think Alma is a sub. On the other, 
on the Elma side, I think it was Camry Neal just came in. Yes. Hunt, bring the ball down. For Hammond. Hammond's on both sides right now. <laughs> Camry. Bowes, Bowes shoot. And it'll be no good. Rebound by Siebels. Good box and out. Pass it to Scott. Showing a stuff in the Neal over to Siebels. Back over to Neil, now Scott. <clears throat> over to Cameron Scott. Stolen by Addie Hunt. To pass it to Hammond. Cameron Neal that just came in for Elma is also a freshman. Bailey oh. out to Tori. Rebound by Scott. Now we'll have Neil to bring the ball down. She'll pass it in to Siebel's and Siebel's will cut in and she'll go up. No good. Tori goes to the rebound. And then we'll have Addie Hunt bring the ball up. And it's stolen by Moore. Cameron. Two by Cameron Scott. Makes it a seven point lead. That pass was intended for Aguayo, just went out of bounds. Again, I apologize, I am losing my voice by the second. But we're gonna bring you this game. Grace is gonna help me out. <laughs> uh, we have more, take the ball out. Seven seconds left in the first quarter and... Shoot it. <clears throat> and Scott, no good for the last, we'll have a 10-17 Eagle lead first quarter. <clears throat> that was a wild first quarter. Southern Valley jumped out to a 10-0 or 12-0 lead. And then since then, Elma on a 10-5 run. Elma's right back in this. Only down seven. All the momentum, really. And Ambos with those two first quarter fouls is huge. Yes. If they can get her third one before halftime, that uh, totally changes, changes the game. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> We'll have 20 seconds left before we start the second quarter. <clears throat> and if you're around tomorrow, we'll have a 4.30, 6 o'clock, and 7.30 game of boys RPAC action tomorrow. <clears throat> so if you're around, you come to Rapaho and watch some boys basketball. No idea what teams, you can tell. So we start off with Bertrand and Medicine Valley, followed by Arapaho and Southern Valley. And then the final game is Elma and Cambridge. That is the East Championship. The winner of Elma and Cambridge goes to the RPAC Finals on Saturday. We'll have Scott take the ball out. Cameron Scott will bring the ball up. Pass to your sister Riley. Back up to Cameron Scott, shoot three. No good. She'll get her own rebound. Pass it in to Moles on. Moles on. And Riley Scott thought about that one. Pass it back to Moore. Over to Cameron Scott. She'll bounce it off Stalder's foot. And it'll be Alma Ball still under their hoop. Riley Scott will take it out. We got about 320 people watching the live stream right now, Grace. Oh my. Well, you're in for a good game. <laughs> this is very. Uh, Riley Scott shoots a three. Got it. Good. Got it. Under Just... Riley Scott's first points of the game. 17 13. Abuelo. Now, should be fouled by Riley Scott. <clears throat> Elma had the trap there. Aguayo able to escape and draw a foul. Elma is going to bring the pressure, though. They're going to start trapping. Hunt to bring the ball in, pass it into Hammond. She'll pass it to Aguayo on the left wing, stuck. Stalder wants it on the backside, she was wide open. Now she takes the three, Take air ball. Aguayo cleans it up. We'll have Riley Scott bring the oh, ball Stalder down. Stalder stole it. Stolen by Stalder and they're going 
gotta call a jump ball on this one. <clears throat> we got three subs coming in for Southern Valley. We got both Boses and we have uh, Natalie Holstein. Natalie Holstein. There we go. Um, Tori Bose takes the ball out. We have Ann Bose back in. Seven minutes left in the second quarter. Ann Bose brings the ball down. Alma looking to trap. She passed into Bailey. Bo shoots a deep three off the back. Oh, oh no. and in. <laughs> got it. That got the shooter's roll there, but she was ready to shoot right in rhythm. Oh, uh, and the mole's on. Back out to Siebel's. Siebel's and back over to. That's going to be an offensive foul on Molzon. She tripped up so a Southern Valley player. That will be Molzon's second. And we'll have uh, Tori Bose take the ball out. I'm assuming. And her sister, no press by Alma. I also don't see anyone checking in for Molzon yet with those two fouls. Yeah. Oh, she, she's already out. Never mind. Just kidding. They she's... just took her out. Uh, Hammond now into Bose. And Bose at the top. <clears throat> so, oh, and stolen by uh, somebody. I don't really know that. Whitney. Is. Whitney. And oh, Riley Scott takes it three off the bat. And another Bose. jump ball. Jump ball stays here with Elma. <clears throat> Southern Valley's extended this lead again, back up to nine. Um. Riley Scott takes the ball out. All right, under Alma's hoop. She'll pass it out to Siebel's. Siebel's will <clears throat> cut in and, uh, who's that? Uh, no idea. Air ball and. That was, that was Whitney. Whitney. And Bailey will get that rebound and have Ann Bose bring the ball up. In the whole C in the left wing. She'll pass it over to Tori Bose. Tori Bose with a three. Air, Air ball. ball. And. It was Southern Valley ball right off of Tiersten Moore. And we'll have Addie Hunt come in for Brooklyn Hammond. Tori Bose take the ball, I mean, Ann Bose take the ball out under their hoop. She'll pass it in to Holsey. <clears throat> Holsey passes back to Bose. And a little high for Bailey to catch, but it'll be Alma ball. Still no team fouls on Southern Valley this quarter. Siebel's with it. And Kenny stole by Tori Bose and Amber's rebound. Nice dump off to Holstie. She'll Holstie. bring it out. Now Tori Bose to the top of the wing will go into Ambos. Oh, well, up and, and, and under, and good. That was, you can't stop that. That was good. Can't stop that. That's a good finish. Um, into uh, Moore. And Another oh, time. jump ball to Hunt and Scott. <clears throat> Good hustle by Hunt. Uh, Force that jump ball and another possession for Southern Valley. As Holstie just mm -hmm. checked out, I think Aguayo came back in yeah, for Yeah, Aguayo her. came in. So we'll have Tori Bowes. She'll pass it into Ann. Ann will bring the ball down. And Southern Valley's gonna call a timeout. I do believe when Southern Valley played Bertrand, I think the first RPAC game, Ann Bose broke their school record for 40 points in a game. She did. Or she, That's pretty crazy. I think she, she tied it or broke it. I can't remember. I think she uh, broke it. She it probably broke it. RPAC rundown. <clears throat> but again, like we said, both these teams in the same sub district this season, as well as Arapahoe. So that is not great for Arapahoe, yeah. but <clears throat> two very good teams. Two of the top teams in our class, in class D1 this season. Currently, Southern Valley is sitting at number three in the wildcard points for D1. Elma is a little uh, behind them. I think they're about eighth in wildcard points right now. Meanwhile, yeah. today at 4.30, we had Arapahoe versus Bertrand, and Arapahoe took the win. And for our 6 o'clock game, we had Cambridge and Southwest, and Southwest took that win, too. 
by two points, I believe, right? Yeah. It was a wild game. <clears throat> Cambridge led the whole first half, was up by five or seven. Southwest went off in the third quarter, led by Bailey Truska, who hit four threes in the third quarter alone. Got the lead back. Cambridge clawed their way back in, lost by two. So Southwest won both matchups this season. We have Addie Hunt at the top and the Bailey. <clears throat> Bailey will go up and she'll be fouled by Siebels, I think. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, Bryn Bailey on the line. That is uh, Siebel's first. Siebel's yeah. first, third team foul this quarter. So only one more left to give before Southern Valley is in the bonus. Still four and a half minutes left. Elma's got to be careful not to foul. Bailey's free throw is no good. Scott to bring the ball down. And the Siebel's in the uh, more. more. She'll shoot, no good. Bailey with the rebound and Bows to bring the ball up. Moore kicked it out to Whitney there, who missed the shot. <clears throat> in the Bows out to Aguayo. Aguayo shoots a three short. Push. Moore with the rebound. Scott will set up her offense. Moore goes in and no foul. Blocked. Ball. That was blocked. Siebel's be uh, foul. <clears throat> It was initially blocked by Tori Bowes, got her own rebound, and went up and got fouled. Eddie Hunt almost got the steal on jumping that pass, too. That foul going to be on Tori oh, Bowes, yeah. her first. First team foul for Southern Valley this quarter. We have Lily Holstey and Miley Whitney in for Bryn Bailey and... Siebel's their second, no good. Corey Bowes gets that rebound. Anna will bring the ball up. And Corey Bowes, she'll go up, easy two. <clears throat> that was a great seal there by Lily Holstein. Ryan Scott with the three, no good. Scott almost with the three, or yeah, Cameron Scott with the oh. three. Miley Whitney steal. Good. Oh, no, yeah, not. that was Whitney. I, I keep calling number 10 Whitney, but that is Hammond. Number 10 is Hammond. Number three is Whitney. Tori both ball and both top. Three foul. I think by Moore. I think so. Um, and Bo's on the line. And Hammond is set to check back in. The Southern Valley Hammond. <laughs> um, <clears throat> probably fouled by Siebel's, I guess. So Siebel's already has two fouls. Bo's second, no good. Moore will bring the ball up. Over to Scott. Should pass it to Cammy. Still by Moore. <clears throat> and it'll fall out of her hands and it'll be Southern Valley ball. We'll have I thought there's Wrestling Hammond, Stalder, and ba Bailey in for Southern Valley. I thought there should have been a foul call in Southern Valley there. You could hear the slap from yeah. up here. But. These two teams, like I said, rivals only separated by about 15 miles from the Southern Valley School to Elma. It's kind of like Arapaho and Cambridge. Yeah. Um, and Bowes bring the ball down. Pass over to Aguayo on the left wing. Stuck, almost stolen off Bose's head. Oh, walk. And that was a walk. Hammond with a three. No good. <clears throat> off of Southern Valley, Elma ball. Natalie Holstein. And Bose takes a seat. Under three minutes left in the first half. 15 to 26. Southern Valley up by 11. Um, we'll 
Riley Scott's three, no good. Cameron Scott with it. Pass to Riley Scott. <clears throat> She's stuck. She'll get stolen by Bailey. And now Brecklinham will bring the ball down. And blocked oh. by. And they're going to call over and back. <clears throat> Well, Addie Hunt and Tori Bowes come in. And number 24, Camry Neal just checked in as well for Alma. That was a great trap there right as she crossed half court. Great job by uh, Scott jumping that pass. Cameron Scott at the top wing. Passing to Whitney. Lob and back to Cameron. Now more. Now Riley Scott shoots the three. Good. Um, much needed. 18 to 26. Under 10 points now. Hunt to bring the ball down. Mm. Trapped. She's trapped. Wreck on him. And got that. Trap her again. <clears throat> and they're going to call a Southern Valley 30 second timeout. <clears throat> Southern Valley was in trouble there. Coach McDonald bailed them out with a timeout. Elma's traps have been working well in the half court. So we have about a minute, a minute 40 left of the second, the first half, 18-26. Southern Valley leads still. In the West Division, we had our first game this evening was Maxwell losing to Wallace. Wallace beat Maxwell. And then Dundee County Stratton, I think, held off Hitchcock County. And now we have Maywood Hayes Center and Paxton going on right now for the finals on the West side. Take the ball in, pass it to Addie Hunt. And they're called Alma Ball. Aguayo just came back in for Hunt. We have Cameron Scott bring the ball down. Got over to Riley Scott. Passed over to. Moore, now back to Neal. Good skip pass, good ball movement. Over to Whitney, now Scott. Over to Riley Scott. Oh, and nice, nice. <laughs> Great assist by the freshman, Cameron Neal. <laughs> and Bose and Tori Bose, now to Boyo. Pass back to Tori Bose. Only a six point game. And Bose is trapped. She needs help. She gets out of it. And they're call. A body on her. Moore. That foul is on Moore. That is the fifth team foul on Elma. So that puts Southern Valley in the bonus. And Bose will go on the line. That is Moore's first foul of the evening. Hunt is set to check back in. And Bo's first free throw is good. She'll have another one. <clears throat> Second's also good. And Hunt is back in for Ann Bose. She'll take a breather the last minute of this quarter. Still only with two fouls, Ann Bose. She has not picked up her third. Neil. Neil out to Riley Scott. Long three. Step back. It looks good, but it didn't draw out. Offensive rebound. Scott goes in. Yes. Great job by Cameron Scott. Well, have Addie Hunt bring the ball down. Over to Brecklin Hammond. <laughs> the boy at the top of the key. Pass it over to Hunt. Hunt will go in, and they're in call. 
Another body on Moore, so that'll be Moore's second foul. So, Hammond, Elma's Hammond will check in for Moore with those two fouls. Shortly. Holsty about Natalie Holsty checking in as well. Addie Hunt's first free kick is good. Who is, who is that? <laughs> Addie Hunt with her second one. <clears throat> good. So we'll have Whitney will bring the ball down, pass it over to Scott. Five seconds, got to get a shot off. Tipped out by Addie Hunt. With three seconds left of the first half, Eagles still at the lead. Eagles up by eight, 30 to 22. Elmo with one last chance for a shot here before half. Two, one, long, long three. Almost, almost hit the rim, but no good. So to finish our first half, we'll have 22-30 Eagle lead, and we'll be back in like 10 minutes for the second half. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, thanks for bearing with my voice as I am battling a little bit of a cold, but we are here to see this game because we didn't want to miss it. So uh, we'll take a short break. We'll mute it for halftime and be back for the second half.
Alrighty, start the third quarter. We'll have Riley Scott take the ball out. 22-30, Eagle lead. And Cameron Scott now to Riley Scott. Cameron Scott about the top of the wing. And pass it into Moore. Back out to Siebel. She'll pass it over to Scott. Back into Moore. And they're in call foul. There'll be a body on one of the Eagles. There's like three of them there, so could be any of them. I don't really know where Mr. Stagmeyer went, but he's like not sounding the greatest. So uh, we'll have, oh, that was a foul on Tori Bowes. At least second. We'll have Ann Bowes bring the ball up. Pass it to Tori. She'll go in and she'll be fouled by Molzon. That'll be Molson's third. We'll have Tori Bowes on the line. Molson will probably be taken out. Yep, we'll have a sub for her. Tori Bowes, first one good. Tori Bowes for a second free throw. Off the back. Jump ball will be called. And it'll be Eagle Ball right under hoop. And Bose take the ball out. She'll pass it over to Tori. Back over to Ann. Shoot three. Good. Easy three for Ann Bose. Scott to bring the ball up. Pass it over to Whitney. Over to Scott. And Moore's looking for that look, but no good. And Scott with three. Good, right to Scott. And Bose bring the ball up. Pass it over to Hunt. Hunt will go in and she'll go up and almost good, but. She'll have foul called on her. Um. We have. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll have Ann Bose take the ball out. And uh, Bailey, uh, stolen by Moore. And Bose, oh, stolen by Scott now. We just got bodies everywhere. Okay, now Riley Scott. At the, at the right wing, pass to oh, Whitney and look no good. Tori Bose takes the ball out and Ann should bring the ball down. So the ball is slowing the pace down. She pass it over to Addie Hunt, left wing, she'll go in and pass out to Bailey. And Bose deep three, no good, off the back. And Hunt with it into Bose. Good look into Guayo and I'll be good. Now we'll have uh, Cameron Scott, right, left wing for the three off the back of the rim. And Call Eagle Ball. Natalie Holstein in for Vanessa Aguayo. We'll have Tori Bowes take the ball into Ann. Bowes. Pass over to Addy Hunt, a left wing. In a Bryn Bailey. Back out to Bowes. Nat Holstein now to Bowes. Back out to Hunt. She'll cut in, back out to Holstie. Back out to Hunt. In to Holstie. Stuck, now Hunt. I mean, Bows. Back out to Hunt. Shoot, Hunt shoots it. Good! That'll be an easy two for Addie Hunt.
Uh, Scott, left wing, to pass it back to over to her sister Riley Scott. Back over to Cameron Scott. And Riley Scott, deep three. No good. And we'll have Stalder. We'll, or yeah, Stalder will come in for Bryn Bailey and they're gonna call almost a 30 second timeout. So third quarter, we have a 449 left. 25-38 Southern Valley lead, and I'll let you guys listen. bring the ball up after that timeout by the Cardinals. Hunt stuck. Hey, Tori Bose. She'll shoot it. And it'll be good right at the back. Tori Bose. Riley Scott to bring the ball up. Pass half court. Pass to their sister Cameron Scott. Over to Siebel's. Back out to Scott. Goes over Scott. Just shoot and almost good. Heidi Hunt brings the ball down. Tori Bowes deep three. Good. And Siebel, Siebel shoots. Siebel off the front of the rim. Stalder rebound and Bowes brings the ball down. And Oh, they foul on Riley Scott. It is loud in here. Um, Corey Buzz takes the ball out. She passes it into her sister, and We have Vanessa Aguayo back in and Brecklin Hammond. And we'll have Neil in for Whitney. And Bo's bring ball up. Hammond, pass to Aguayo. Now over to Bose. Back out to Stalder and air ball. And there's the eagle ball. And we're gonna have Lily Holsey in and Bryn Bailey. For Stalder and Bose, Tori Bose. And uh, Hammond's gonna take a seat. Well, uh, and Bose deep three. Almost good off the back. Aguayo with a rebound. To, uh, and Bose right wing looking to do something with it. Aguayo. Back to Tori Bose. And miscommunication between Ambos and Lily Holsty, and it'll be a cardinal ball. And Mr. Stagmeyer back. Working on getting my voice back. It's not going well. <laughs> uh, we have <clears throat> Riley Scott <clears throat> passing to Siebels. Siebels over to Moore. Moore <clears throat> shoot, and she'll be fouled by <clears throat> Bailey, I believe. <clears throat> No, nope, I'll be on those. So that'll be Ann Bones' third foul. And so we have more on the line. First one's good. Hunt checks back in as well as uh, Hammond checks back in. More with her second free throw.
Oh, good. And we'll have Addie Hunt to bring the ball down. Pass it into Hammond on the left wing. She'll get stuck, trapped. Back out to Hunt. Over to Boyo, Hunt at the top of the key. Breck one hand, will go in. Right. And nice drive. Almost got that one, more to rebound. <laughs> Neal with it, now over Scott. Scott shoots off the rim. Brooklyn Hammond with the rebound. Now Addy Hunt brings the ball down. Over to Brooklyn. And Southern Valley's gonna call a timeout with Alma with a good pressure. 30 seconds, I believe. And we'll have a 26-43 Eagle lead still. 2-11 left of the third quarter. Tori Bowes take the ball out. She pass it into Addie Hunt. We'll have Siebel's come in soon. <clears throat> we still have Hammond. Three. And Addie Hunt the rebound. And she'll get that stolen by uh, Hammond. The other Hammond. And Siebel's will come in for Callie Hammond. Cameron Scott bring the ball up. That's over to Whitney. Back over to Scott. Mm. Now to Siebel, down to Moore. Good, good look. Ball, good and there's a foul. And I think they're going to call that on Brooklyn Hammond. Mm. We'll have Moore on the line. First foul for Brooklyn Hammond. First shot for Tiersten Moore is good. And Bo's in for Aguayo. Aguayo or whatever it is. Tiersten Moore with her second free throw. It is good. Well, have Ann Bo's. Addie Hunt. On the left wing, back over to Bowes. She'll pass it into Hammond, and too long. And Siebel's will just come in for Hammond. Uh, Callie Hammond for Alma. <clears throat> Miley Whitney takes the ball out. She'll pass it into Scott. Over to Cameron Scott. Kirsten Moore, and they're called travel. Bose take the ball up. Pass out Addie Hunt. Addie Hunt with a three. Good. And we'll have Scott bring the ball down over to Cameron Scott. That, would, that was a great drive and look by Bose. Mr. Stagmeyer struggling. I think I'm done. He's done. And they're going to call a foul oh. um, on Southern Valley. And we're going to have some subs also. Um, that'll be a foul called on Tori Bowes. That'll be Tori's third foul. And we'll have. Riley Scott take the ball out. 
in Addison Siebels. Siebels, star pass over to Scott. Scott, shoot to score. Got it, got it. Ryan Scott with 4 3 so far in this game. Over to Ambos. She'll pass it in to Bryn Bailey. Aguayo's a shot. Air ball. And there'll be a jump. Oh, something. Jump ball. <clears throat> Someone about him's not, fans not happy with that call, but. They wanted to travel. Yeah. Alma ball still. Miley Whitney take the ball out. Cameron Scott over to Riley Scott. And the Seabull, Seabull shoots and she scores. Five seconds, five Siebel's seconds. first shots of the game. Addie Hunt over to Vanessa Aguayo. And she throws it up and we'll have a 33-46 lead for the Eagles in this third quarter, and we'll have one more quarter left. About to start a fourth quarter. Eagles with the lead. One quarter left. And tomorrow we'll have boys RPAC action. So stay tuned for that. Same times 4 30, 6, and 7 30. And Alma and Cambridge will play at 7 30. Southern Valley and Arapahoe at 6. And we're trained at Medicine Valley at 4 30 tomorrow here at Arapahoe. And start this game, we'll have Hunt with it. Now over to Corey Bowes. She'll pass it into Bailey. Bailey goes up and no foul call. And Bowes the rebound. Uh, Addie Hunt, top of the wing. Pass back to Tori Bowes. Tori Bowes the three. Off the back. Bryn Bailey the rebound. She'll go up and it's good. Riley Scott. And the Cameron Scott. And those are right through, right through Riley Scott's fingers. And we'll have Tori boasting the ball, eagle possession. Mm. Addie Hunt, left wing. Pass in to Aguayo. Aguayo shoots a three, air ball. And for well, Addison Siebel's that rebound, and we'll have Kirsten Moore bring the ball up. And they're gonna call a travel on Cameron Scott. <clears throat> Maywood A. Summer is winning 41 to 34. Um, in our other West final game to the Road to the Maywood. Championship, we have Maywood. Pace Center over Paxton in girls action. 41 to 34. 41 to 34 Six, in the fourth, fourth quarter. It's 5.56 left. Meanwhile, uh, one of the teams took a timeout. I'm assuming Alma. Uh, uh, oh no. Mr. Stagmeyer is done. <laughs> it just Struggling murmurs. Big time. <laughs> this is what I sound like. This is why I'm not talking. So whoever mm. wins this game is going to the championship and McCook on Saturday. And right now on the other side of things, it looks like Maywood will be in the championship. 
They have about five, six-ish minutes left of their fourth quarter. They're playing in Hitchcock tonight. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow. We'll have Tori Bowes take the ball out. Eagle possession. 6.57 left in the fourth quarter. 33-48 lead for Southern Valley. And Bowes. Pass over Addie Hunt. Tori Bowes. Wide open. She'll take it and no good. Well, Cameron Scott stuck in the corner. Over to Addison Siebels. She'll be tripped up. Comes over to Cameron Scott. That'll fall out and we'll have eagle ball. Turnover by Scott. And uh, Hunt. Back out to Ann Bowes. Thought about that three. She'll back up. And Addie Hunt in the left wing. Over to Ann Bowes. And the, ooh, good pass. And almost good. But they're going to call it a, a jump, a jump ball. So we'll have Eagle, uh, Alma ball. Riley Scott takes the ball out. Hammond is in. Oh, uh, Brecklin Hammond in. For Vanessa Aguilla. Cameron Scott now back to Whitney. Cameron Scott will bring the ball past half court over to Siebels. Back out to Riley Scott. Over to Whitney. Riley Scott. And I'll fall right through. Another eagle ball. A lot of turnovers for Alma so far. Addie Hunt. Over to Ann. Pass over to Tori. In to Hammond. Should try to go up and stalled her with the rebound. And Bose over to Stalder, and Siebels will get that, steal it. Siebels bring the ball up. Over to Scott into Siebels. Back out to Tiersen Moore, and she'll step on the line. Push. Or they're going to call a push on that, so um, Tiersen Moore will go to the line. Or she won't go to the line, they'll just be. Okay, yeah, she'll go to the line. Uh, foul by Tori Bowes. That'll be four for her. <clears throat> Tori Bowes subbed out. <coughs> Stalled her. And uh, Whitney. And <clears throat> still be on the ball. Tipped out by an eagle, though. Cameron Scott and the Seabulls back out to the other Scott. And Cameron Scott. And they're going to call a foul on Hammond, Brecklin Hammond. And it'll be Cardinal Ball under their hoop. Riley Scott in the Siebels. Siebels back out to Whitney. Back out to Scott. Cameron Scott wide open, but no luck. Cameron Scott goes in into Moore. And she's good. Oh, no, that was Siebel. <clears throat> Hunt, top of the wing, pass into Hammond. And Bose, right wing, try to set up her offense. Put Addie Hunt. She'll go up and almost good. She'll go back up and it'll be good. Stolen. Stolen by Hammond. And 
Fair Evans call. Stole it. Eagle ball, I think. Stolen by Hammond. Oh, well, and Holstein, uh, Aguayo back in. And Bose passes it into Aguayo. Top the swing. Over to Ambos. <clears throat> Over to Aguayo, the right wing. Looks to do something with it. Pass it to Bailey at the top. Bose. <clears throat> Eagles taking their time. And Bose cuts in and she'll go up and oh. cuts. That was a good it's shot. Yikes. That was a It's tough. You are watching, that was an impressive shot. Siebels at the elbow now to Whitney. Whitney the three off the rim. And Bowes the rebound. <clears throat> and she'll throw it. Siebels the steal. Whitney with it now to Scott, Scott shoot, almost good. Aguayo with the rebound. Now to Bose. Holsey, left wing. 250 left the four. And Bose, we got lots of subs too, so. We'll have Aguayo, right wing, Bows. Back out to Holsty. Should go in with it, pass back out to Ann. And they're gonna say a foul on Whitney. That'll be Whitney's second foul. Timeout. Timeout, Alma. Timeout, Alma. We're gonna call full timeout. So, 35-52, um, Eagle lead so far. 2:18 left in the fourth quarter. Stagmeyer is out. <laughs> he's done. Go put stuff up. He's he's done. <laughs> he has no voice left. <laughs> you don't want to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get it to you. Hand <laughs> it over it to me. Mr. Stagmeyer's struggling. Just okay. So I think it'll be me tomorrow. <laughs> Mr. Stagmeyer is done. <laughs> He's a little under the weather, but it'll be all right. <clears throat> it is packed in here, and he's struggling to get out with no voice, so he can't really tell anybody to move. <laughs> um, Bose took the ball out, and Bose passed it to Hunt. And they're gonna call a foul on Camry Neal. That'll be Cameron Neal's first foul. At Ann Bowes. And Bose cut in back out to Addie Hunt, wide open. And that'll be off the Eagle ball. Off the Cardinal, I guess. Um, Eagles will have it right under their hoop. Pass in to Ann Bose, and she'll be fouled by Camry Neal again. Second foul for Camry Neal.
And Bows bring it in. And Tori Bows. Open shot, no good. She'll pass it over to Miley Whitney and she'll go up and she's fouled by Bryn Bailey. That'll be Bryn Bailey's first, or second foul. We'll have Miley Whitney on the line. Good. Any second, no good. Rebound by Ann Bow, she'll take it up. Hunt, now to Hammond, now to Tori Bows. Hunt will go in, no good. Still, uh, Camry Neal will bring the ball up. Riley Scott shoots a three and she'll be fouled and good. What a shot. Scott with a lot of threes and we have Bryn Bailey on the floor. No good for that. That'll be Brecklin Hammond's third foul. Riley Scott on the free throw line. <clears throat> Go one shot. And Bose bring the ball up. A minute left of the fourth. Body on uh, some more. I'll be Tiersten Moore's third foul, and we'll have Tori Bowes on the line for two. First one, no good. Tori Bowes with her second free throw. Is no good either. Cameron Scott now to Camry Neal. And Addie Hunt. Bring the ball down. 30 seconds left, and we'll have Anvos top left wing. Siebel's will foul and Bose to the 12 seconds left. And Bose first free throw good.
Second one's good. We'll have Southern Valley with the win. 40, 50, 40 to 54 Southern Valley win. And the Eagles will either be playing, most likely playing Maywood Saturday night in McCook. So stay tuned for the championship. Tomorrow we have boys RPAC games at 4 o'clock. 6.30 or 6 and 7.30. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you tomorrow.